All right, there we go. Yeah, we've appeared. That's it. We have materialized. Ah, look at that. A nice, nice sip. Yeah, from the a from the Ajax merchandise. Oh, oh, is this my Ajax mug? I just picked a random mug out of my cupboard. I didn't even look at him. Wow. Oh, so that was, it was pure. I wonder if Ajax is even here. I mean, I don't know. That's a nice mug. I'm glad that you're the only one that has some doors to official merchandise today. Hmm. Well, I guess it's technically not yours too anymore, is it? <laughs> a hat. That's a good hat. Yours too. Texas hat. Cowboy hat, even. It's an ass hat, actually. <laughs> what a way to start. What? <laughs> what a way to start. Well, you know what, guys? We didn't really. We had. We did have an update. Okay, an unexpected one actually. We have we had balance patch. They put a bit of a balance patch on. It wasn't, you know, it was, it was a little mini balance patch, but some some stuff did actually change. Uh, and yeah, meteor shower got bugged. Yeah, me apparently Rip, meteor. Uh, yeah, wing three was unplayable. Yeah, there, is some, there were some things that went slightly wrong. Uh, yeah, including meteor shower. I believe it does way more damage than it should in world versus world. Just for one, no reason. One shotting people feels. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's good. But you know what, Ellie will never one shot ever again. PV mobs, What's buddy. That? Okay, the PV mobs. PV mob. All right. Okay, <laughs> and that, that's why that's why we have we have mellow. Like it's kind of like we just want to enjoy pain. We thought you guys would enjoy pain, so we we brought Meller on tea time, guys. To just want to bully yeah. me on stream. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we brought him on to bully because he's he's the Ellie main. Okay, look, he's his little character there is holding the holding the elementalist, the elementalist uh, little icon there. Okay, but pff, Weaver got slapped. You know, that was, that was, that, yeah, that was the balance patch. So uh, let's just talk about that then. Uh, where do we want to start? I think what we have to start is definitely the elementalist stuff, okay? When right. was the last time that Ellie wasn't top EPS? Uh, ooh. Well, I, it, wow. it, it, I guess the, the, it, even during the, the day before this balance patch, it wasn't top DPS everywhere. You, I mean, it was like necros most places, honestly, at this point. It was necros That's all over the be, place. It would be when Tempest started getting nerfed patch after patch. And then before that, it was when Conley Warrior was super bugged and people were stacking like a lot of them, or maybe there was another patch after that. Yeah. Well, but it's not all DBS anymore, uh, and they've, they've they've nerfed it maybe a little. Well, have they nerfed it too hard? Uh, may, maybe, but then again, maybe not. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the best uh, all the time, I suppose. I mean, you know, the community reaction has been has been negative shall we say they're like what what is this trash class time to go play something else uh you know that just to me it kind of exposes people for just wanting to play the class that's the best damage instead of actually liking the class i tried to have this discussion on stream um with with some people and they and they, they just didn't really seem to understand like hey you know if you like playing ellie that's great news you can still play ellie it just doesn't do as much damage anymore like if you no, like the rotation you it's fun you can't you can't play it unless it's top dps well, yeah, I think that's how people actually feel, though. Yeah, yeah, people actually think that. Uh, well, to, to, well, let's see, dude. Well, right. Imagine this. Imagine. Dude, imagine what are you, this. a filthy casual? I am a casual, yeah. But imagine this, Roy. Imagine it. It's that the Ellie is getting kicked from the pugs instead of the necros. How the tables are turned. Well, we know oh, the guys still kick necros. But you know, yeah, but they kick necros as well because they like the forty chess arena. They nerfed the hell out of um. They nerfed the hell out of Epidemic as well. So now everyone thinks Necro is trash well, as well. That's been coming for a long time, though. I mean, that nerf needed to happen, didn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, that was... So when it comes to when it comes to Epidemic, that um that ability was... I mean, Nemesis was right, dude. That was probably, like, the most overpowered ability ever. Uh, and now, now it's gone. Well, it's not gone, actually. It turns out that Necro is still really, really great. Um... It's it's still really really strong. It kills loads of ads. It has decent single target damage. The only thing that, the only bad thing that happened to Necro is that they just slightly nerfed the damage by changing Doomfire. But that's it really. It's uh, it was it was well that, yeah, pretty that actually affected uh, World vs World more I think than oh yeah definitely uh that, yeah. that it, it really like slapped um Soul Reaping for for Necro in the competitive game mode. So uh, the nerf was uh, huge actually yeah. changing it from. Yeah, yeah. Um, Either yeah. run death perception or um, possibly even swap off of soul reaping. Yeah, yeah, I think soul reaping is is it's more optional than it was. I I almost like yeah. that though. If that's what it took, then 
maybe that's good because before you were almost locked into certain trait lines mm. on Necro the, because of how good the the obvious yeah, ones were, yeah. right? Like it, you, you, the interesting you, yeah. thing is that it it affects uh, NA. Or, yeah, it affects NA more because you already you already ran Spite and Soul Reaping on EU for the most part, but you know NA um, generally runs Blood Magic on their Necros, so Blood Magic is obviously still just as good as it was before. Uh, and so if you're swapping off of Soul Reaping, then you're swapping to Spite and you're changing the build. But on EU, you're not really gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna start playing Blood Magic, so they're just gonna keep the same. Probably just from Blood Perception, uh, Death Perception. Yeah, but they're wrong. Oh, I know they're wrong, but you know, it's, I mean, EU as a country has been wrong. Yeah, you know, how many times, right? We don't really have to count it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. <laughs> EU as a country, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. There, there, there are very few countries that are as good as Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to see more options develop. Like, at least it's something, right? If it was just there was an obvious fallback that everyone would just go to, then. That'll be boring, but now now there's a few options. You know, you can go in different approaches, and hey, that's pretty good. I like it uh, when it comes to necro and uh, when it when it comes to PVE. I mean, yeah, I mean everything you know basically stays the same. It gets slightly worse, but I don't know. Like, Epidemic is still really good. You can still kill ads. Uh, you can yeah, and you can still cast Meteor Shower on Ellie. So you know the sky has not fallen in. They are trying I to feel bring like variety. Variety is always good. Like. People always cry about Ellie nerfs, but I think personally Ellie deserved it. And it's not completely trash now either. It's just, I feel like it's slightly below where it should be because Ellie is supposed to beat up DPS and it's supposed to have. Uh, Mello, my player. friend, you need to speak up. I think Maybe. chat is trolling him, but I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, Mello, oh. pretend you're a man for a second and speak up. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, like Ellie has a lot of cleave. Yeah, so that's people... why it can't be top single target DPS too. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. I actually right. agree with that. I feel like Ellie should have top cleave and should be IS DPS only on, uh, well, the biggest hitboxes in the game. But at the same time, right now, it's top DPS nowhere. If you really look at, like, well, Gola benchmarks, or if you actually do an actual, like, Gorsival fight, you're going to see that Ellie is slightly above what uh, Thief is right now. Like Dagger Dagger number five, spam one Thief. And assuming that you actually hit those like targets in the fights, because you're supposed to be cleaving, you're going to lose even more damage because of target cap on stuff like Meteor Shower and like Lava Fonts, because they have a target cap still. Something like Sarah, Ellie loses so much damage. And you're supposed to be taking it just for cleave. I don't think that's really. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of frustrating. Yeah, uh, there, there is that that trade off that does have to happen, though, to a certain extent. Um, you know, like, uh, the, the yeah, as one up says in chat, like to a certain extent, it should be the case that the thief does more damage on on single target. I wouldn't say it should do more damage single target on big hitbox. In that instance, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so it, the, the, the Ellie should still triumph there because of that. It seems they're really not, aren't the biggest fan of having that hitbox, hitbox distinction, though. Um, because a lot of the things they went after were the things that hit multiple times on the same boss, right? So they went after stuff like Lightning Hammer, um, the Glyph as well, like the Lightning well, Glyph the, as well. All the Conjure weapons got changed right like or at least ice bow and lightning hammer wasn't just uh, yeah lightning hammer yeah they i don't know if they were trying to bring conjure weapons back like because obviously ice bow has been out of the world of meta for a really long time um i don't know if they were trying to change it to make it more appealing but i didn't really do anything uh, they were it was more like they were normalizing the way it functions um with regards to hitting multiple times on on the same enemy they just made it so that every time you hit it has less and less damage um, up to a cap. It's the same as Meteor Shower and the Lightning Glyph and Lightning Hammer now as well. Um, but yeah, they they did that. It, it just seems odd that it, it seems it seems like the opposite thing that, right? Like instead of making it scale really well on large hitbox, they kind of pulled the small hitbox and big hit, hitbox numbers together for some reason, or it's more like they kind of pulled the the big one down. Uh, they targeted that one specifically. I don't know. Like they just they just really hate Meteor Shower. They really they really dislike it. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I think what the problem is that probably Thief is a little, little too strong right now. Almost like it, it benches for what thirty nine k. 
That's maybe a little bit too high. Maybe a little bit too high on on on, on any of not even playing it right. Yeah. Isn't the rotation on uh, Thief a lot? I mean, not necessarily difficult, but it requires you to do like a press more than two buttons or something, right? And so it's, so it's, it's easier it's, to do DPS and other stuff. It requires positioning and resource management as well, and that's what people 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 literally think you press two buttons, and that's incorrect. It's just not correct. I mean, so it, I, it, it, I, it finds difficulty in other places because you have to stand differently in other places, and depending on what your tank is doing or what pugs are doing or whatever is happening, that can get tricky. Um, people also don't ever think about dungeons or fractals because the golem and big hitboxes are all that matter anymore to people that read Reddit and pugs everywhere because they think that's in-game content. So, like... Uh, there's actual management that goes into Thief. It's not just stack on top of the Chronomancer and Druid and use your macro element plus rotation. Like, they're different. Hmm. It's not going to be as reliable on fights like Sabata, for example, where she keeps turning around. Yeah, or... you might miss, you might miss her back. Knows. Her back keeps moving. Yeah. yeah. But even so, I think I, despite how well, no matter how difficult or tricky it is to manage the resources, and it, you know, I can definitely see it being annoying sometimes, right? A hundred percent. I think it's probably a little bit too strong. Like, do we really want anything doing like, actually forty k DPS, so it, uh, sustained? Because it it doesn't really have much of like a ramp, right? It you just start stabbing them in the back, or you start shooting them with the rifle. There's no real, um, there's no ramp there. It just does it. It just does it. You just start going crazy. Or, you know, you glitch and then you do half a million DPS as well. Like, you can do that too. But, uh, oh. You know, it's such a shame. Did anyone, did anyone do any good records with that? I think, uh, I think some would like duoing bosses. It's good. It's great. Uh, but, you know, what would, what would a Guild Wars 2 patch be without some, some good old fashioned buggerinos, though, dude? Like, you know, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's good. It's very good. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The, the, all, all the early mains are really sad now. I think the patch is actually fine, though. Like, from a non alley main perspective, mm. it brings most professions close to each other, gives more variety, variety to people to play different things. I just feel like Tiff is, well, yeah, slightly a little bit above everything else right now, but the rest is completely fine. Yeah. For me, I, anyway. Is there any is there any class that's really an outlier right now? I'm not sure if I can think of one um, in particular. They all seem to be, they've even brought Condi NG back. Like, everything seems to be very close together right now. Uh, to be honest, in terms of, well, in terms of usability, there's no class that you think, wow, that's trash at this point, right? I mean, core Mesmer. You, uh, well, well, Core Mesmer, when I was in, as in, core early. Pro, pro, well, no, profession rather than any set of specializations, right? Because uh, like, you could say that, you know, Power Reaper, well, you know what, Power Reaper still kind of sucks, but it's not even that bad anymore. They made it, they made it quite a bit better. So they're even trying to do, fix Power Reaper, guys, even Power Reaper. Uh, but you know, Tiba, the next the next rating tournament, you should just ban all the meta specs. Oh, oh, you have to play you have to play weird stuff. Now that would be exciting, yeah. actually. Uh, but I mean, even Power Soul Beast, man. Even Power Soul Beast is good. Like, is there any is there any okay, profession pick. that doesn't have a good that doesn't have a good damage spec now? I don't think that's the case. Even I actually don't think that's true. And even they're even working on so most of the specializations work. You know, I saw Randy trying to play Power Scrapper. It didn't look that bad. Maybe everyone else was trash, but it actually was okay. You know, it didn't even look that bad. So I don't know. Randy just yeah. makes bad things look good. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's true. It is actually true. Wait, what the hell? Wait, what? What? What the fuck is this shit? What is this? <laughs> what is this pasta, guys? Oh my god, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I see. The top racist. Uh, mm. Mm, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's so, so PvE is in a pretty good spot right now, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh. No. No? Why not, Brazil? No. They nerfed Epidemic incorrectly. They went low effort. They, they, they took the low effort option, which was just... Nerf the projectile speed and nerf the duration, which it should have applied a debuff, but that was probably too hard for them to figure out how to code. And so, because they've probably been trying to figure that out since they up the condition cap on things back in like what 2014, I think. Okay, but I mean, like that, that was they nerfed epidemic wrong. So, but, so what do you how do you think they should have um changed it? 
it should have applied a debuff that caused the effect that it has now. So bouncing it is... Mm -hmm. You can't really do that. It should have applied a stacking debuff that nerfed the duration by like 50% to everything that it got applied to that already had the debuff. So you don't you don't think the problem was the number of condies it transferred? No. The the problem like it, it it was fine. The problem was just that it was abusable and that people decided to abuse it, but. They could have just nerfed it correctly, but they didn't. Which isn't anything new. And like I don't like some of the core builds. I have no idea what they're doing to those. Like just lol and power berserker. Like axe berserker still doesn't exist. It should, but they uh. Fucking Nico, dude. I'm what sorry. Did Nico, dude. Fuck yeah, Rofia was like, imagine if mods did anything. He banned her. <laughs> Oh god. Alright. Mods clean this Sorry. filth. Alright, anyway. Um Yeah, I mean cool. the, I I think the epidemic nerf was actually really good. I, I I do have to disagree. I think this was pretty much the best way to do it. I uh, halving the duration. I, it's an easy way to do it, probably. I think that's probably one of the, the uh, Yeah a solution that's not too difficult for it. But it's also a really good one because it's it means it's still really good at um Doing what it, it what its original design was for, which is a massive AOE condi cleave, right? For killing ads, which is great. That's good. Um, you know, so that's easy. And then on top of that, you can actually still use it as a small DPS increase, and it's not out of control. So I think it's really good. You can still balance it back and get some free damage, but then you can also kill the ads. And it, it's still, it's arguably overpowered, in fact, like, still. Like, that's, did, that should tell you a little little something about how insanely good Epidemic really was. It, it's still arguably it, overpowered in PvE, I would say. Does it prioritize which conditions it uh, transfers, or is it random? Oh, it's it's all condies. Oh, oh right, 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 just a right, yeah, okay. Yeah, they just, oh, have, the, they just have the duration, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing that Patch did that most people, uh, well, besides people that do, like, speed kills and stuff, that... A lot of people that didn't look at is that they fixed how the invulnerability works in mm. uh, bosses like Pilgrim oh. and Sabata, yeah. which makes Necro basically, well, bad yeah. there now. Th this was the biggest um, nerf to, well, I suppose in, it, to conditions in general, I suppose, but yeah, I imagine in particular the, 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 the Epi Bounce stuff, right? Um, to be fair, I, it was really weird that it ever worked like this to begin with. You wouldn't expect it, right? It was very odd. That it behave uh, that bosses behave this way, but uh, before the patch, um, when bosses would go off into an invulnerable phase, they'd disappear off the platform, or, or you know, as the Veil Guardian just disappears into like a, into a sparkle. They they still take condition damage like, while they're invulnerable, right? But not anymore, not anymore. Um, the reason they changed this is probably because of probably because of the records. They probably saw these records where Veil Guardian would spawn in the last phase. Yeah. With um like twenty percent HP instead where he HP. where he should have thirty three percent so that yeah that was completely ridiculous and that you know that <laughs> was definitely deserved but indirectly this does make um conditions considerably worse right because basically well you missed thirteen percent of his HP right for free um which is you know it obviously makes Condies a lot worse but they still have application in different fights like the whole point of this change was to almost like draw a distinction so that bosses with phases. Um, they want to be power oriented, like power favored, and bosses without phases are more going to be more condition oriented. Right, and that's what they will kind of want to poke how, at. How 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 is that ever a problem? Because back, okay, all right, go over to history lesson. Okay. So back when a raw path four was like the hard, difficult in-game content, and the Dwayne of Priestess, which was the second to last boss. So that boss has a phase where it goes invulnerable and disappears and it heals. And it heals a lot. So the strategy used to be that you would have like a ranger or a thief with short bow just apply poison onto where it was and the poison would affect it while it was in stealth because it still stayed there. And so you would reduce the healing while people went around and did the mechanics so it wouldn't full heal by the time it was back. But they fixed that. Whenever it went invulnerable, it would like cleanse and conditions wouldn't affect it anymore. So I, they fixed that in like late 2012, like several months after the like maybe three or four months after the game came out. I don't even know if it was late 2012. I don't know, but 
how it was is that around for a while? I think. How is that still a problem? Like how how is that still affecting bosses? Well, there is. We all know that there is multiple invulnerabilities in the game, mm. like different ones. Yeah. From what I know, um, well, the people that worked on raid bosses when they released Wing One and the new ones are obviously different people, and they add different codes for different vulnerabilities that do different things. Yeah, but and... how? Do, I mean, it's it's puzzling that they just like either don't know that stuff like that already yeah, exactly. exists. Like, I just why, why? That's exactly the reason. I think they didn't even realize up until, like, well, basically years later that there was a thing. Well, until people started abusing it with Appy, I guess, because it wasn't really noticeable before. Yeah, I think that, that's likely. The, that's probably the more likely option, do you think? Uh, it's, it's that they maybe wanted to make it so that... Could, maybe they thought that conditions would be kind of crappy unless something was like that, because then you just lose a lot of damage at the, towards the end of the phase, so they left it in like that, so to get more value out of Condis and maybe equalize it a bit. Whereas it's obviously gone it always went way too far with all the epi stuff where you just do most of the bosses HP while they're not even on the platform because that's just ridiculous and then they just fixed it. Uh, but you, you're going to you're gonna say something about um, what, what I was talking about with regards to how ArenaNet want to kind of target conditions at um, bosses with only, well, with no phases, right? And then power at, power at uh, bosses with phases. Well, what do you, what do you, you think, think about that, Do you think conditions are too strong at the moment? Wait, in, in PvE, I would probably say they were, not but not general, anymore. Yeah. Uh, conditions okay. in general, oh boy, I mean, phew. Uh, in PvE, I would probably say, uh, I mean, you're saying, no. if, you know, Arena is trying to target conditions, they must think they're too strong. Oh, no, 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 what I, what I meant was, is they were trying, they're, they're trying to make it so that um, condition and power are favored differently on um, um. different boss types, right? So the, the boss with only one phase archetype, like Matthias... Uh, Desmina, right, no, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it arguably, arguably even Doom, although Doom is kind of a bit of a hybrid boss, I suppose you could say. Uh, they want to target at um, stuff with Connie classes, right? And then stuff like Veil vale Guardian and Gorsival, they want to say, yeah, this is this is a good for this is good for power. This is good for power because it's you know. You think, it, you think that's you, how you it can, should be, or do you think that it should sort of be try try to make it more normalized across the? Well, it's not board. necessarily that like. Oh, you just can't use condition damage in Gorse of All. Mm. No, I know. Is... But the problem is the people. Here's. So I read the Snow Crows Reddit post right before this, and they do a very, very, very bad job. Ooh. Repeatedly saying this isn't viable, blah, blah, blah. Use viable when that's the wrong word to use. You should say optimal, preferred. Things like that because viable. I mean, I, I. Why is this still hard to figure out? You're telling people that things aren't viable when things are like perfectly viable. But like, I don't know. Getting asked, is my warrior open world build viable for <laughs> open world PVE? And people tell them no, or like, <laughs> is is can I like just just quit using that word? Just stop. Stop. Just quit it. Brazil, when are we gonna when are we gonna get a a website like Brazil Marks? <laughs> I don't need to make a website like that. Well, I don't know. I think your fans would appreciate it. What fans? I don't I have, have the fans. entire Guild Wars Two community. <laughs> yeah, what I was trying to say earlier, Teapot, mm. um, is that I don't think they changed the invuln to do that. I think they just changed it because they didn't know that it was a different involved code. Oh. Well, that's pretty much what I was trying to say. I think they could differentiate Condi professions to power professions by, well, they could do it in a like simple way. Bosses that have, well, like small hitbox and move a lot, Condi will be better, and bosses that stay still a lot and have a medium big hitbox uh, will be better for power classes. But I feel like that's just like kind of lazy mm. and will be very weird to balance for like future future patches and make any difference like with expansion as well in the future, yeah. I don't know. Well there's there's always gonna be some inherent properties of the bosses. I, I mean, if you, 
if you think about it, it's kind of already the case. Like any boss with phases is already get, always already going to be good for power classes because you can just re, like reburst all over and over again. Like yeah. you, if especially if you're an Ellie, right? If you're an Ellie, you, you know you love things that die really quickly. Uh, well, maybe not so much anymore, but you used to, right? Uh, because you can you, you you can do your epic combo all over again, right? With you know with with the meteor shower, the glyphs, all the conscious and stuff, and you can just kind of nuke it uh, out of completely into oblivion. And you know a Connie boss like takes some time to if you're a Connie class, you take some time to ramp up. So it's no good. If Veil vale Guardian phases in 30 seconds, you just don't have enough time to actually apply all your aids to the boss, right? Which is why something like Desmina is a bit better for that. So it's already inherent. You could also uh, play with toughness. They don't typically do that anymore. Um, as such, I don't think. I, I think all the bosses basically have the same toughness. Uh, they, they only, they only, the only real outliers there are, are like Veil vale Guardian, I think. And is it Sloth? Yeah, Vichy has like very, very low. Yeah. The Doom mobs take different damage, the skeletons take yeah. increased power yeah, yeah. damage. Yeah, and the spiders take an increased crony damage, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, there is well, some there's differentiation there as well. Card on Sabatha. Mm, yeah, he's only 10% though, isn't he? He takes like 10% more crony damage. Or something Have like they that. actually ever, ever changed um, toughness on bosses to balance professions before? Or like, change the meta? Risen Berserkers also have zero armor. But nobody knows that because people don't play dungeons anymore. It's a fun fact. And ranger enemies in dungeons are, I mean, just lol if you use range damage against those because it's way worse than using melee damage. Because if you target a enemy that's classified as a ranger in a dungeon, it will evade and spam and put down traps. And if you don't target it and just hit it, then it doesn't do anything. But people don't do dungeons anymore because it's dead content. <laughs> Yeah, they have all these, all these cool, great things in dungeons, and they just don't. They have no idea it's there. I guess. Who knows? Well, it's because no one knows how it works anymore. It's. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, the entire old. dungeon team is gone, right? Yes. It's been gone for a long time. Do they even work at Arena anymore? <laughs> no, they fired Robert Rota like right after. Do you think that anyone in Arena even knows that dungeons exist? Yeah, but they like. Dungeons are so, like, oh god. People don't know the extent of how broken and bad dungeons are. They're horrible. Like... No, dungeons are fun. They're not. No. Dungeons good. are very broken. No, they're fun. Like, they're not. Everything is fun. Yeah, I'm it's all good. Everything is completely perfect. Like he, he, it's it's the, you you get a lot of money from it. Like it's good to do. Like it's rewarding content, and they're still fun, and they still take strategy. The different kinds of strategy is the important thing about them. But mm. they're really broken and exploity. Mm. That's what happens if you let something go with for too long, and and then eventually the players just break it beyond belief, and also it gets broken by the all the patches. <laughs> Or you don't Guild know what you're doing in the first place when you're coding it. Ooh. If yes. Guild Wars 2 has spaghetti code, then Guild Wars 2 dungeons are spaghetti which are splattered yeah, over a whole city. I think they just don't care about breaking the code of dungeons anymore at this point. Uh, like yeah. before, it was, before it was frustrating, but now they're just like, who cares, kind of. Mm. The, the, the way that they have historically always fixed some of the like really ridiculous jumping puzzles in dungeons, they just put up an invisible wall. To try yeah. and block people, and people just found a way around it. And so, like, I I saw a video yesterday of someone jumping over the Spider Queen room, which they fixed like seven times in AC. And you can just jump over the door, and run and do the dungeon, and skip half of the events because they're not hooked up, and you don't have to do them. And like, I don't know, say like the the events aren't all connected, like. In a raw path two, you can. I think they actually fix the staff. There's a staff by Korga the gorilla that permanently stuns undead mobs, and you could pick that up and stun lock every single enemy in that dungeon permanently, and just sit there and whack on it, and it wouldn't do anything. You could also jump to the last boss of path two and take the invulnerability buff from it, and then go into other paths and do them all and take the rewards from multiple paths, and also you can't take damage from anything and then like coe you can do all the paths in one path honor of the waves you can kill all the bosses at the same time like you can it's just a disaster horrible disaster well 
So well, that's that's yeah, why they're not fixing. Hold on, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. The balance patcher is Brazil taking this on a trip. It's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tangent, but it's one that's worth addressing. And and here's why here's why that stuff doesn't typically matter. No, like your average player who plays. You just start, comes as oh dungeons wow and they're not going to exploit the dungeons right uh, your average player isn't going to exploit the dungeons so it doesn't really matter and like I, honestly and I, I know in Brazil you probably know people who still like go underwater on Veil Guardian and kill them or some weird shit but that yeah. that that bug doesn't really matter because dude like, like three Wait, people can, do you that you break through the map in this game yeah <laughs> So uh, you can, there's loads of weird stuff that can happen with these weird exotic bugs, but almost no one does them. For a start, almost no one does dungeons. Then on top of that, like the dungeon exploit community is even smaller than the dungeon community, right? So it's, it's not it's not really a big deal. Like, wait, the, the question you have to ask yourself is like, will dungeons work if you do them basically as Arena intended? And actually, no. I don't even know the answer to that actually because I don't do they, dungeons. But... They don't because they're based on NPCs and the NPCs can die or get stuck on some engage the combat and oh, death yeah. the tremble oh, bones. Oh, I love them, dude. It's horrible. Like they're they, per they, now they have perfect padding. They they would have to completely probably redo most of the dungeons for dungeons to be something that they go back to. So you have at. no faith. I'm disappointed in you. Guild Wars 3. Guild Wars 3, there we go. Anyway, uh, back to the balance. It, uh, there was, sure. it, it was, you know, what, what Melo was saying? We barely touched yeah. upon we the have, massive balance pack. Well, okay, we need to get going. There's We're loads be here more. For hours. There's loads more. Uh, there's so much to there's, talk there's about even more. with this balance yeah, pack. There's, there's two interesting things I kind of want to talk about. I want to talk about what Melo was saying about adjusting boss values. And this is something that I know Deaxon uh, feels feels uh, feels quite strong about, which is really interesting as well. Um, and then I want to talk about what Roy was talking about. In, in, in general, the overall balance between power and condi. And this, I would say this is mm, uh, certainly more applicable in, in the other two games gamers because it kind of doesn't really matter in pv as such but it certainly does in the other gamers so we'll, we'll talk about that after that as well so when it comes to adjusting boss values this is probably saying that should this be something that's done I i'm not sure how do you think the community would react if they just added like another 5 million hp to gorseville or something i feel like they'd be really mad i don't know it was well, like, making you, raids you inaccessible people had to huh? do updrafts or could you do it without doing updrafts it still uh, oh, I mean, if, if you, if you, it would certainly raise the bar, but it wouldn't make it no. impossible, um, for, for sure, okay. right? Um, I mean, I, I think, I think making the raid bosses more difficult, or at least harder to kill would probably be, I mean, it would at least change things up a bit, right? Like, it would make the, it would make doing the raid seem a little less, um, maybe repetitive for at least yeah. a couple tries. Well, uh, people at this point don't even know that updrafts are a mechanic at Gors of all. Like, they don't know that that's a thing. Like, that well, then they'd have to learn. I, I mean, you know, it's not like it's not like the, it's impossible to see the updraft. I mean, you have to take the updrafts to mm. get to Gors of all. It's, you know, and obviously there's guides. You know, if, if it made, you know, sort of pug groups forced to use an updraft, I don't think it would be impossible for them to figure it out. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh and but, yeah, people still do updrafts occasionally. It, it would be fairly they interesting though if you if you if you kind of have to do it right if they force you to do it to a certain extent. I, I, I'm, maybe it's correct even it might even be correct to deal with this sort of thing. You know, it's balance uh, patch is balance patch every four months. Uh, it, oh yeah, I was actually gonna bring this up. So like this, they clearly in the last I'd say certainly since POF and a little bit before they've clearly gone off their cadence of like a quarterly balance patch. I'd say, um, and I mean with this one specifically, it certainly wasn't in my opinion, like, a huge patch. I really don't think that they changed that much. Uh, and the last balance patch was... I think the underwater changes, and, I mean, they've had a few, like, sort of smaller changes in between, you know, the Nerf Chrono Phantasma. Um, they... I think there was another change in between this one and that, but I don't remember what it was. But, like, I are we thinking that this is, like, the first... Like, this is the last sort of, I guess, big balance patch we're going to have for a couple months? Do we think that they're going to come out with something again next month, you know? Um, and I, I think I don't think they're going on the, the quarterly release yet anymore. And the reason why I was asking when the balance patch is is because they could do um, instead of changing like meta and everything necessarily every single balance patch, they could do a small either a smaller patch in mm -hmm. between, or every balance patch they could uh, change. Well, in raids anyway, they could change bosses' values rather than changing skills mm. for every profession. Well, they don't change the meta now with every patch. I mean, maybe PvE, the meta changes every patch, but it certainly doesn't for Rulers World and PvP. I mean, I think the meta has been pretty oh, much yeah. the same 
Even, <laughs> mostly the same for PvE and Worldless World. Yeah. Uh, PvP and Worldless World. I, on, honestly, I, in terms of general playing, nothing has really changed in PvE, I would say. Like, the only thing is you'll see more thieves now, I suppose. And, and that's... And you'll, like, Con the NG has kind of appeared. Right now you can play So I suppose it has changed. Yeah, you know, it's changed a fair amount, right? It's changed a fair... There's, there's some stuff that is different now in PvE, but... Broadly, it's the same. You're not going to see anything radical. I mean, I don't. Yeah, you're not going to see anything crazy out of nowhere, right? Um, for sure. I don't but, think Rollers Roll has really changed at all. Yeah. Since PUF. Yeah. I really want to. I think yeah. I think the meta's become more defined, but I don't think it's really changed. You you still run firebrands, you still run spellbreakers, mm. you still run scourges, and then you can kind of run some revs and weavers if you want. And, like it's yeah, you know, and a thief. But it hasn't it hasn't really changed since PUF came out. Yeah. Um, the, the kind of approach. Know, I mean, the meta in Heart of Thorns is way more diverse, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I would, I would agree with that. I think it's certainly more rigid with a lot of the um, very specific power abilities, or, or, or well, also I think the playstyle that has been replaced after Heart of Thorns is just incredibly bad. Um, yeah. um, you know, the other thing about that is it's kind of sad because they added more technically classes to the game with POF, right? And mm. it seems like the meta has been stuck in the same spot for a while. Um, even with the addition of, of new specializations, could this be because it's harder to balance yeah. game modes sure. because they they unsplit the balance in between game modes so well, they have a hundred to be careful to what to do but they have started to do that yeah yeah it's i uh, mean there's like some pretty big differences between pv and world versus world still yeah you know? Uh, yeah, in terms of but yeah, mostly the predominantly the AI in World versus World is considerably worse than. PvE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need more. We need more PVE mob, like PVE mobs in, in World versus World. Uh, when it, uh, well, uh, yeah, and that, that's where Mela's approach or, or Mela's, Mela's kind of idea about this could be really interesting, right? Uh, so you tweak the you tweak kind of the mechanics in in the game mode itself to adjust it, which would be pretty interesting. Obviously, that's, that will be something that will be mainly targeted at PvE. I think it will be quite difficult to to do that in another game mode, unless... I, I don't know, it's kind of like... So suppose uh, stuff that's really good is stuff like um, like Mirage, right, in PvP. Like, how could you make a map that's, like, really shitty for Mirage? Like, I mean, how... I mean, <laughs> it'll be pretty difficult, right? Like, Mirage is it's pretty good! Uh, it, like, it, whatever you do, it would be pretty... I don't know, like, a really small map, so you barely get value out of Portal? Well, they nerfed I don't know. a fair amount, right, uh, with this patch? Yeah, and, and to be they fair, the cooldown, they did try to give, um, uh, give Connie Mirage some slaps, but... Uh, I think I it's know. yeah, it's still very. Sh I haven't, to be fair, I haven't really played PvP much recently. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. But... I played some PvP and yeah, it, had, it, like, doesn't, fucking... it doesn't seem like it's. Yeah. yeah, it's just Mirage Fiesta, dude. Like nothing really changed. I was kind of hoping for a bit of a shakeup, but it's not really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, Mesmer, really Mesmer didn't get changed at all in World vs. World either because you were running Chrono and you run it mm. as a bunker spec, so oh, yeah. you know, the damage nerfs did absolutely nothing to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you run you run it mostly for the boon output. Um. And like CCs and stuff, so it's not unless they nerf those. The rubber shield isn't going to change. You're still going to run Chronos. Mm. And Mirage is just still busted. So well, apparently, yeah. well, when when it comes to World vs. World, if we, you know, we can sidetrack a little bit, because I, you know, I'm I'm a, you know, I do like me some World vs. World. I, what, what, it kind of seems that they need to really just if they want to restore diversity in World vs. World, they just need to like obliterate. Scourge, right? Like, it, it, the, the, I think bubbles and and moment. yeah, and spellbreaker, right? Like that. that, that it's not spellbreaker; it's, it's bubble. I well, mean, yeah, you know what I mean, right? Like, that that the bubble elite skill is just ridiculous. It, it just punishes trying to melee like, so much, right? So everyone's kind of forced into this kind of weird meme. Uh, you still melee, but it's just that when it's kind of aids to do it. I like melee is still stronger than range. It's just that. It just really aids, <laughs> no matter what you do. Yeah. But the thing, the, the big thing with bubble is they have to be really careful about nerfing it because, well, they first they need to nerf it. I mean, I think the biggest problem with it is the radius. Um, if they change, if they if they nerf the radius, I think that would be really good. But they have to be careful because if you remove bubble, like if you make it so terrible, you wouldn't run it. You probably wouldn't run spellbreaker anymore, which I wouldn't necessarily hate because I like berserker a lot more than than uh, spellbreaker. But you might not even run warrior at all. Then you'd probably just stack more scourges. So you do have to be careful when you nerf it, but definitely reducing the radius would be a really good start. Uh, I like an idea I've seen. I've seen an interesting idea. How about um, if when you cast the bubble, it grows, right? So it's not instant. Yeah. I've Yeah, I've, I've seen that. So it's kind of like idea. Nightfall. The skill Nightfall. Yeah. 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 
yeah. Reaper, Reaper Four uh, and Greatsword. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a pretty interesting idea. I think the big thing, the the big reason why Bubbles Radius is such a problem is because when you have a really big group fighting a really small group, um, they can just drop millions of bubbles, and it doesn't really matter where they place them because the small group is going to have nowhere to go. And so, like, even if you, even if you have the radius small at the start. Um, if you have that really big group fighting that really small group, like they'll just grow in size. I mean, unless it's like a really slow growth rate, but you know that wouldn't wouldn't really make sense. So I don't know. I mean, it, you could try, it, but I I think it'd be better just to have it a, as a a set size and just make it smaller. Yeah. You know that way that way where you place it, you know, you actually have to try and coordinate a spike better as opposed to just drop it wherever you want and you're gonna hit someone. Hmm. I don't know. Well, in, in PvP and Wolves, what I think that just the meta is very very uh, fast, almost, right? It's a like very, very bursty, very spiky, right? With with everything, with power on Condi. So it's like, well, I, and I think com com combined with bubble, I, I kind of feel like the, the the stuff that isn't too bad in PvP and PvE, it, it it scales very obnoxiously in World vs. World, if that makes any sense, right? So so stuff like Firebrand um, and Scourge and Spellbreaker, it, all this, like, re it scales really, really hard right, in, in Wolf of Swords, like, as soon as you have, like, fucking ten Scourges, like, everything is AIDS, right, because they just all put the shade at the same time, they all just, like, drop the wells all at the same time, they mash all their buttons at the same time, suddenly everyone over there has got 50 stacks for every condition in the game, right, like, that's just, it's, it's just, at 900 range as well, right, that's just, and it's also around you as well, so have fun with that one, buddy, so it's, it's really, really annoying, um, then you have, like, the, the bubble on top of that, where it's, you know, there's like this death zone that compounds all of that, right? It just amplifies all the other classes so much because suddenly, if you have no boons, well, you're in a horrible situation because the the one of the worst parts about POF in my in my opinion that just pisses me off so much actually because like well because I play Necro uh, in PvP, right? It's like the CC spam. Like the CC spam is just uh, out of control, dude. Like, the amount of aids that every class now just spams on you constantly, knocking you over, pulling you, fearing you, whatever, is just... It's just terrible. It's horrible. It's, 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 it's disgusting. Um, and they can't really get rid of it. It's, yes, it is an AoE fiesta. Like, it's a massive AoE CC aids condi corrupt boon fiesta. Right, and yeah, I, I think that makes it unhealthy, and the, because World vs. World involves so many players, all of that just scales to the point of hilarity, actually, whereas, where you just like, it's, it's like, well, this is fun, this is great, this is great, if we go in, you know, we're gonna have some mega aids, yeah, we need that, we need that Condi Clear Warhorn support warrior, I love that change, but I love the Warhorn changes on warrior, man, that's the, hi the hypest shit ever, it's fucking great, you seen that, Roy? Ten target Warhorn skills, dude, holy shit! Yeah, but it's like yeah, I don't, I don't shout warrior. I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Yeah, you just do well. you shout shouts are still shit. Uh, and I mean they they made shake it off like a sixty or fifty second cooldown now, so you definitely wouldn't run that, even though it clears more conditions. And then I nah, just shouts are bad. I dude, I would love if shout warriors back. That was sick. That was such Shout, a good build, shouts but. are just not compatible with Guild Wars 2 anymore. They haven't yeah. been since like Heart of Thorns. But why not? Yeah. Maybe even because they don't do enough. Like they don't I mean like if you want to play shouts, like play soldier and sword. Yeah. There's and only there's only one them. shout that is never gonna drop out of the middle, and that's stand your ground. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably. That's a good but, one. But like they 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 don't do enough and they have long cooldowns. Why would like why would you play it? Like even like outrage on warrior. Like if you want to stun break, you just play like outrage or headbutt, and that's probably better than shake it off. Well, you don't. Yeah, I mean you wouldn't run berserker and well, well that, I mean just saying. Yeah. Like, no, I, I know what you're saying. It, it, it's just or balance dance or something. Like, mm. Why like, you don't shouts don't give you anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it would be, it would be mm. cool to see Shadow Warrior come back, but at the moment, it's definitely not. Like Warhorn changes aside, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, no. Well, a anyway, because right, Hammer and Greatsword are just too good. And you're not going to you're not going to drop oh. Hammer or Greatsword. Oh, yes, dude. Warrior is fucking hype. Uh, but yeah, and when when it it's fucking aid. Yeah, it's aids. It's aids. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes aids is is uh it's fun. It's fun to play. You know, like the, the aids is fun to play. Um. Yeah. But to, to kind of come back to that, it, it just does feel like the game, um, 
the, the balance needs to be addressed a little more often and, and more aggressively, I think. I was, well, I wasn't expecting this balance patch at all. I didn't really know, I didn't, I, when I was like, oh, balance patch, huh, how about that? Um, and they were quite aggressive on some things, but it almost feels like there's a lot of work to be done and this kind of scratches the surface and it just kind of shows you how disgusting some of this stuff really was, right? Like the fact that they can, they can nerf uh, Condi Mirage quite hard, I would say, in PvP, and it still spectacularly aids. Like, should tell you something about, like, the state of Condi Mirage, you know? Uh, they did delete SD Thief, which was, I don't know, that was a little harsh, I think. Good. Uh, but, yeah, that's, it's pretty, it pretty feels bad, man, if you... They really... Yeah, they, like, obliterated it, dude. Like, you, okay. the steel trait doesn't even fully refresh steel now. Um, oh, that's, that's actually really, I mean, that, yeah, that yeah. trait was broken. Yeah, the, to be fair, that yeah, to be fair, that was pretty pretty insane, right? It was pretty insane. They, they nerfed a bunch of stuff. They they made, but they made they buffed the hell out of Dead Eye. So Dead Eye is probably AIDS. I, I don't even want to know what people are doing in PvP right now with Dead Eye. It's probably really disgusting, uh, by the sounds of it. But I, I don't know. It a lot of the stuff here, like the changes to Warrior DPS, the changes. Uh, if we go back to PvE, like the change to Rev DPS, um, Power Soul Beast, like Power Reaper, like even arguably like the Scourge changes. It feels like this stuff should be happening very frequently, right? Because this, I, I think this patch in terms of um, normalizing the damage in PvE, which is like arguably not that difficult to do, right? Especially with balance split. Like this is really good. It was really good. It really kind of squished everything together. There's no, it, uh, even, even the, the weirdest and most anal person on Reddit could, would struggle to say that like, there's any class that isn't viable now, right, for PvE, right? And, I don't know, I, I really like the, the way they're doing that, but it feels like this should be happening a lot more often. There's still some more work to do, and certainly in the in the other game modes as well. Um, it's, it's certainly in PvP and World vs. World, there's some stuff that needs to be uh, adjusted. And But the thing is, I'm really, uh, I'm really curious as to how they can really fix the stuff in, in World vs. World, because I think World vs. World balance is probably... One of the hardest to to deal with, probably the hardest, because it's the least restricted environment, right? Like it, it, you can, the players have the biggest little sandpit to play around in, right? Uh, and as a result of that, I think it's very difficult to balance, and I'm not sure exactly how they can do it. I, I, it's almost that like they need to remove certain classes for design for design reasons, like, like Scourge. I don't think Scourge should really see play as a damage dealer in World vs. World, for example. I think that's going to be inherently inherently silly uh, uh, in, in World vs. World. I, th I think that would be pretty fair. Would you, do, would you agree with that, Roy? That it's good, just like by design-wise, it's kind of inherently silly uh, to, to have in, in World vs. World. Well, or PvP to a certain extent as well, actually. I, I agree with that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't... I know what you're saying, but like, I don't know if the barrier alone is enough to make it still used if you take away its damage. You know what I mean? Oh. I mean, if you still have it rip boons and you still have it output as much barrier as it does, like maybe, then it'd be okay. But I think if you like completely destroy its damage, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it because it definitely does way too much at the moment. I mean, it's there. Is, there's no comp that doesn't run a lot of scourges. I mean, mm. I think the minimum number of scourges you're ever going to see, and I'm talking like 15 zeros, like yeah. four. And it, you don't even run as many guardians anymore. Like you run more necros and you run guardians, and it's it's definitely too much. Like it, it absolutely well, needs to be toned down, or at least something needs to well, be changed. I, I would I would target um, big shade really. I don't, I think if you remove big shade, you remove the problem with scourge, in my opinion. What what stats uh, does it use? Um, there's most well, there's a couple different builds you can run. Um, one is like full Selly. Uh, you, you could technically still run trailblazers. But it sells better. Uh, Trailblazers they, just makes it easier. They, they need to uh, nerf the scaling of the damage. So if you want to do damage, you have to play something like Vipers or more offensive. Yeah, I mean, you, I think it would be really good. interesting if they nerfed Selly in World vs. World because, you know, they did that in PvP, but they never really changed it. I don't think in World vs. World. I don't believe they ever changed Selly. No. Uh, they might have like a really long time ago, but it's been the same for a while. Uh, and it just, it's, I mean, there's no reason to not run it on Necro, really. Yeah, it's a horrible stat set. I like, like it. it, it, it uh, there, there are scenarios where it's, uh, like, just super broken. And then, like, there are people that literally just play it because oh, this has every stat. This has to be the best. And they don't know what they're doing. And, like, they're just looking at it, have every stat is really... That's 
I think it's cool. I think it's really cool, right? It's really cool. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, though, like no matter what you change, discourage. If you don't nerf bubble, then I think the way the play style is going to stay the same because everything is still going to be centered around spiking inside of bubbles and yeah. dropping whoever drops yeah. the better bubble wins, basically. Well, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, that that, I, that stuff is just. That's why I think wins is going to be very hard to balance. Like I kind of feel the same. Just reduce the radius. Just reduce but, the radius. You know, you, know, you were talking about how like you you'll probably end up nerfing it to the point where it's bad. I kind of feel that's almost inevitable. It's like scourge. I don't think scourge should. Um, this, this is something that uh, a lot of people have said, and I, I agree with this. Well, it's, it's also because I said it as well. Uh, like scourge is either gonna. This is one of the first things I said about scourge. Like scourge is either gonna be like god tier or it's gonna be trash. Uh, that's uh, that's in terms yeah, of damage. I mean, that's deal, how... right? That's how a lot of things are, you know. No, right no, now. I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I think stuff like uh, I don't think it has to. I don't. Everything has to be a bit closer together. Right now, like scourge. Well, certainly before the patch, at least. Like now, maybe a little bit less so. But before, you'd you'd have to be a lunatic not to run scourge, right? Because of how much damage it does and how easy yeah. and and the the accessibility and the utility of the scourge, like how much damage it can output, right? And at range as well. Uh, but like now, like hmm, like now it kind of makes you think, right? Like now they've they've nerfed it a bit, but it's still going to be really good. Like the, the the design of the class is carrying it really hard. I yeah, honestly, I uh, in PvP, like maybe they've kind of cracked the nut, but I think it's gone over to the other side. I think Scourge is probably pretty awful in PvP right now. I just don't think it's good. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard that as well. I, um, but uh, that's kind of correct in my opinion because I, I think that Scourge shouldn't, um, uh, it, it shouldn't exist like you have points and you can cover an entire point with your mega aids like but yeah that's not really good that's not really good design that's not really good design like yeah you should be playing you should play reaper really like, or i well i think you should be you should play reaper but you, you should think have, reaper's you... meta or you just think it's better than scourge? Uh, i think design wise it's better than scourge um right yeah. but you don't you, you don't think it's meta i'm pvp oh I, I don't know no probably not i think there's too much um Right now, there's too much stuff. I've like, heard like Rev is, is now yeah, like Rev way is more in the meta, which is awesome. There, there's too much Rev. Uh, there's too much Rev around in Mirage and stuff like that. Like Re Reaper Necro in general is too slow for the way PvP is right now. I think it's just way too slow. Um, so you won't be able to even hit stuff really on your on your Necro. Unfortunately, feels bad, man. Um, and that, that's kind of you know th those. Are the Mello, what do you think? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, like. The reason why I'm not talking much is I stopped playing Ruby World and PvP a long time ago, so I'm just listening to things. I still value your opinion, though. Um, why? Because he's a very cute girl. Ooh. Ooh! Well, I don't know. The World vs. World one is, is interesting. I, if you remove Scourge and Spellbreaker, or at least nerf them a lot, in terms of damage output, for example, I would love to see Scourge be reworked actually as a support, right? Big Shade, buff, I would buff the hell out of Big Shade, basically. So Big Shade changes all of your abilities, changes all of your F2 skills to not do damage anymore, and they just support. Oh, think how cool that would be, man. So, because you, you, you know what pisses me off, Roy? Okay, World vs. World, well, Big Shade. What does, what do you, tell me. You want right angers now. me? Yeah, Wait, what? You don't put the shade on yourself, dude. God damn it. That's stupid! Why don't you Fuck. put- the, yeah, right? The shade goes on the enemy instead of putting it on your team yeah. for the 10 target support. That's stupid. Seriously. Come on, it's ridiculous. Come on. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Uh, but yeah, that, that's God what I think it. about that. They should- they should make Big Shade fully rework Big Shade. Exactly, Kidda. See, Kidda and me on the same page, okay? I completely agree. Big Shade should be the, like, the OP support, okay? Like, Healing Scourge, Minstrel Scourge. Well, I mean, you can actually run that already, to be fair, right? Uh, but, I think it should be a much better- what, what, the, what, what the hell is this shit, guys? Like, Brazil, did you start this? Yeah, you I'm did, didn't you? I'm on to him. I'm yeah. on to him. Yeah? He's the, he's the fake account troll. I oh, figured. shit. Mela's exposed. Oh, yeah. But do, do you think yeah. if you if you uh, uh, if you address Scourge in particular, Big Shade and Spellbreaker, do you think you'd see a much more free meta in World vs. World? Because I kind of think you would, right? What do you mean by free? Um, more choices. So in so for in ter in terms of like op kind of opening up the DPS, would you start seeing stuff like uh, Power Reaper again or that sort of thing? I think, I don't know, it's really hard to say because, I, I honestly, I mean, I, yeah, I think Power Reaper would come back, which would be awesome because yeah. it was, it's just such, such, such a fun spec. Um, it, but it's just, I don't know, it's really weird, like, people would be, 
I would be kind of worried that people would start pirate shipping more, which doesn't exactly make sense. But like, if Bubble becomes not as strong, and if Scourge gets nerfed to the point where you you can't either either like barrier isn't as strong, or they just don't do as much damage or something, um, then you know people will probably start stack. I mean, what would be the next best thing to stack, right? If Power Reaper isn't really good, you'd probably start stacking more revenants. Uh, you'd probably see a lot more weavers come out, uh, and if you're not running as many warriors anymore because spellbreaker is bad uh, and berserker is still shit, then you you know you're not going to have as much to to lock down those classes. Um, so you might see more of like a range meta come out. But I mean I don't know. It would be really hard to say. I I overall I just think in general melee is way better than ranged as a play style. As really gameplay wise, yeah, I would agree, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so I think it would be it would be hard to see that. Um, and I'm I'm all for like nerfing, you know obviously bubble and scourge and, and stuff like stuff that makes it just so e easy to push all the time uh because then it i think you get more of a diverse play style so that i mean that'd be nice I, either way no matter what if you're trying to to make the the meta more diverse or or not you and scourge and, and bubble need nerfs you know no mm. matter what yeah honestly i'd rather see wins completely taken out of the meta than have it in its current state sure sure yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. Feels, Firebrand feels needs nerfs too, yeah, but like, it's not. All they do is heal, you know. I mean, obviously they provide boons and CC and you know all this shit, but like, it's not to the point. I don't know. I mean, it, you Tempest is still very strong. Um, so you know, there's other there's other supports or healers. You can. I mean, Scrapper and Druid aren't really viable, in my opinion, but you could run them. So, I mean, I'd rather see, like, buffs to Tempest than... Or buffs to other healers mm, than yeah. uh, nerfs to Firebrand. I agree. Uh, the, um, the one thing... Because you're only running three Firebrands, anyways. The, the one thing in World vs. World that I would like to see is addressing the monopoly on stability that Guardian has, right? Uh, for, yeah, you just have to be careful how you do that. Because you don't want to you don't want to turn it into another pre hard of thorns uh, only playing range never pushing because of how shit stability is. Oh no 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 no! Was, I, I wouldn't nerf probably it. Probably the worst. I wouldn't I wouldn't nerf it. I would probably I, I know, would I, um, I would say uh, what, well when I saw um, the stance chair stuff for Soul Beast, right? I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be. It's going to be Guardian 2. Soul Beast is going to be the new Guardian. And you see stuff like the Dolyak stance, right? And all the AoE support it has, it does, it does some resistance as well. It flopped horribly, right? It, it turns out that Soul Beast that gives fuck yeah. all so AoE stability, right? But like, yeah, stances uh, are really bad. Let, let's you know, let's talk about that, right? Like, why not buff that up? Why not buff Soul Beast into Guardian 2 to a certain extent? Like, it, it does something a bit like Guardian, the stability, and it has some other utility. For example, something really cool on on Soul Beast is that you can make your entire party uh, immune to immobilize and chill and cripple stuff like that right like that, that's pretty cool right that's pretty cool um it's kind of like i think the main problem is like what else do you get from ring soul beast because well exactly it gets right? at, you know it doesn't really do anything else well it doesn't like, give we've, stability we've really either, running so. it a lot and it just you can't even if the stances were good i don't know that it would be viable i mean maybe but oh yeah oh don't, don't get me wrong you'd have to massively address some of the stuff i would say oh you have to completely change it uh but that sort of thing would be great right like what, what other class could give stability let me think what would make sense for another class to give stability almost like warrior like heal if imagine if like shout warrior did it i don't know what about a light class i guess Near yeah. uh, Ellie? That Maybe would be such Ellie? a meme if they made... Dude, bring back Dagger Dagger Ellie. Scrapper? Give it stab. Oh my god. Scrapper could give AoE oh, yeah. stab? That could kind of work. You know, they that sort of thing. They, they need to redo Scrapper. Yeah. Make it a support spec, honestly. Because yeah. it doesn't... I, like, it's, it's I, mean, I, would, I would just love a, a meta shift, honestly. Because it's been... I Like I said before, I think since POF came out, you haven't really seen a, a mm. change in meta. Yeah. Um, in World vs. World. And it's it's a little it's definitely getting stale. I mean, it's just the same fights over and over and over. I, you know, that's what World vs. World is, I guess, yeah. right? Haha. But like, it's yeah. I, I don't know. It would be nice if we had a, yeah, a bit of a, a, a bit of a shake up. Shift. Yeah, and that would I think it would attract people back to the game mode, right? I think uh, in general, I mean, I, I really hate to say this. I, I I hate to be too much of a pessimist, but I think uh, there is a little bit of staleness, kind of kind of creeping into the game a little bit. Well, not I, I. I wouldn't just say in World vs. World. I would say in every game. Right, right no, now. I know. Um, a little uh, bit. Listen, bro, I'm trying to be PMA this, here, okay, this buddy. Started happening like I'm not six yeah. years ago. Um, that there is a bit kind of creeping in, right? People are getting bored. People are drifting away from every scene. Like you can, you, obviously, this is most noticeable in 
I, I don't know. I feel like World vs. World population is actually kind of okay. I, I have been... It is less active. Certainly on some servers, it is less active. But people are certainly drifting... Away. When. Pe people are drifting away from um, PvP. They've, they've uh, condensed well. the servers massively. Of course, it's going to seem like mm. you know, the population. But if you if you had the servers still spread out like they used to be, the game would be so dead. Yeah. It'd be so incredibly but, dead. But what's disturbing is that uh, something that I didn't really expect to happen uh, because I was assuming we would get new content. People are drifting away from the PVE side as well. When I say PVE, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean raids, right? Like raids are the, the LFGs are draining, guys. Like people are losing a little bit of interest. And um, to be fair, uh, they will come back when there's new content. So I imagine ArenaNet isn't really concerned about this sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, people are, oh yeah, sorry, so in three yeah, for, yeah. The, tr the trouble, yeah, I mean, that is not good, I mean, that, it's a real shame that, that people are drifting away from all game modes, but, one way you could bring people back is with balance, right, and you know, I'll tell you what, I reckon people, some people probably did come back, like, people who, like, really like to play Thief, right, like, hey, boom, we can do our, we can do our Deadeye now, you know what, I bet Left is happy on NA, actually, um, you know, he only it's plays so Thief. Uh, and now he, now he gets to do now he gets to do that. But yeah, it's been so long since the last raid wing. It's been what? It's what? It's November. So, ooh, okay. Uh, it's been it's been a little while. About seven months. It's um, been a year, has it? Oh, okay, seven months. Mm. Sorry, since the seven since months. what? Last raid. Since the last raid wing. Seven months? I thought it was longer. Mm. I thought it was oh, nine it? months. I'm pretty sure it's been closer to a year, but I, was, I saw nine. months. It was November. Wow. It was like the middle. Of, it was in the middle of November. So it's, yeah, no, I guess it's, it's, it's more like eight let's, months. Let's yeah. count. It's more like eight months then, I guess. Four December, months twice. January, Four months twice, yeah. February, March, April, May, June. Yeah, July. it's been so long since. Oh, Steve it is players. July. Holy that shit! It's a hot. It's the middle of July, guys. What is going on with the yeah. time? Whoa! About eight months. American countless. Yeah. Whew. Uh, I it, mean, it's... why would you need new raid wings when you have five? I mean, think how that's yeah, that's, that's a good chunk. That's a lot. I mean, that pro it probably takes like three hours per raid wing. So you know, that's a lot of content. Mm. What? And then you can go play dungeons and living world. Yeah, one of the, one of the common arguments that I I see uh, about this, and it, you know, it's it's a bit, it's very, it's very um, uh, how what, what's the word for this? It's uh, it's very smug. It's a very smug argument. As they always say, you know what, guys, you you can go if you wanna if you wanna play Guild Wars Two for raids, why not go why not go play another game? You know. Why not go play another oh. game and then come back in nine months? Well, the thing is, buddy. Okay, people like to play this game with their friends, and if all their friends like quit the game and they've got no one to come back to, like, you come back on your own. You know, it's like what a stupid thing friends? to say. What is it's that? this? Um, it's it's really sad to watch people who kind of try hard the game just die off, right? But by, by the time there's a new raid wing, like no one is going to even care. It's just it's just really sad. It's just like no, ever, ever, no everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, it's a new raid wing, guys. Yeah, woo, yeah. So oh, let's see. it's um, I don't know. It's it's a real shame. Like the 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 hardcore scene is dying in all the game modes, man. They're killing it off. Like everyone's just gonna want to do living story instead. Then more people are gonna do living story. It's, yeah, uh, I mean, my experience with PVE for the past, I don't know, since I've been back and before, has been like pugging with like a friend that still plays, and pugs are either people that don't know what they're doing but think that they do and are terrible people that are new and trying to get into content or people that their friends have just quit and whenever you get into groups like that that are good players that their friends have just quit everything's great whenever you get into content where like it's new people trying to get into it groups like that then it's a gamble and sometimes they want to learn and sometimes they already think they're doing everything right like last night I was playing with card and we were raiding and we had a mesmer come into the group that was giving no boons at all. They weren't doing anything. They were just running around the river of souls at the bottom of the map, just fighting mobs while everyone else is going into circles. And the most they did all night was ask where to use their soul mirror. That's all they like that. They, they, they ran around, got ported on fail guardian Gave no boons and asked where to where to use their soul mirror. That's all he did. And then we had dragon hunters come in, putting down traps, doing five k DPS, as coming into the LFG for a DPS. And then we had people come in like Tweety that did more than everybody, 
somebody from Cat's Guild that was doing 40k damage on Core Guardian. It's just you just have this giant disparity of people who are playing and pugs hoping that they see someone that they know or that they get good luck because all their friends quit or it's new people that come in or people that are just bad. And so, like, that's... And dungeons are, like... I, I don't know. I wish that... I, I wish that dungeons were, first of all, they were just all level 80, all the explorable modes, because if I go into a dungeon group and there aren't level 80s, I just leave, because just doing that content without... Like, doing AC with level 30s... Yeah, you're not gonna have a good time. It's not gonna work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna be fun. Work. It's, you're gonna be you're gonna be soloing the dungeon, and they're just gonna be running around. Like, hey, Mella, what do you think? Yeah, go for it, Mella. I feel like that not getting a raid for so long is just frustrating, and we can all agree on that. But Mella, you've like, been listening. Um, yeah, but oh like, I don't want to talk about dungeons. We've done this already. We did this earlier for so long. <laughs> like, Mel, can you please try and stay on track? All right, <laughs> this is your first tea time, dude. I, I think they should like. I don't know, dude. Um, instead of balance, I, I think the change to like um, boss values would be a good idea if they don't wanna like. I bring this up again, but maybe they could do some sort of like raid instabilities that goes weekly, where they change the boss values in lack of new raid wings. It's like a, I don't know, it's like, it's a weird idea, but I don't know what else they could do. Well, really. I heard like, that the, uh, the reason really they, right now. they have so much time in between uh, raid wings is so that way if you get pregnant, you have, you don't have to miss any raids. <laughs> I mean, it's eight months, one more, and then I guess I can raid again. Well, first yeah. of all, that doesn't make any sense because the entire Guild Wars 2 community is just hateful white men that they don't get pregnant. <laughs> So, that doesn't that, that argument's gone already. That took two seconds to defeat. <laughs> well, but, but, but maybe we should talk about that some more. <laughs> wow! Wow! Well, uh... they they should they should add a real new dungeon with the story mode. And actually, with no story. Nah, mode, they, they, they cool. what? If, why? Why should they do be, that? It just be something new and cool. I'd like a new dungeon. Just people can go in with their level 80 exotic gear and their tokens for some skins, and they don't have to do AR and fractals. And just be, it just be something new. Why not? Why not? It was an idea a while ago to bring a, a small, well, I guess a normal sized dungeon with every living story that gets released. I mean, the, 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 they, they can't even finish the living story. How are they going to finish a yeah. dungeon? I mean, like, what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even do an what? open. Well, the open world Ouch. map is like is is like unfinished as fuck. Like there's is nothing. It really? in, yeah, it, it's like oh, that. Uh, it, I still it, haven't gotten out of Istan. <laughs> well, there 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 are maps in Living Story that I've apparently been to that I didn't know were in the game. Like someone brought up Ember Bay the other day, and I was I, like, well, I, Ember Bay was pretty cool. Well, I I, the, I uh, forgot what it was, and like Istan, like I didn't know. I, I've been through Istan and like done everything in it in the story, and like what was it? What's the other one that's the volcano map? Draconis, Draconis Mons. I forgot about that until I was cleaning out my bank and found my druid stone. Like I just forgot that these existed. Yeah, I think I mean we we talked about this for a while like a, a lot, and I think a lot of people said it. There's just not a lot of replayability on the maps. Like yeah. there's not a reason to go back to them. If you play the living story, you're on it, and then that's it. You don't go back. Like, the Heart of Thorn maps, obviously, just because of the big metas, everyone goes... I mean, they still go to them and do them. Um, and then mm. you don't really go to any of the other maps. Like, even the Path of Fire maps, I don't think a lot of people continue to play. Because, I mean, the the bounties aren't really that rewarding. Uh, no, you can do not. them all in a couple hours. and uh, You know, there's just... There, what What's the point? Like, you do Living Story and that's it. So it's like all these all these maps, which is, like, I think one of the big appeals, right, for, for every Living Story release. Just there's not... So it seems almost like a waste. Spend so much time making them, and then like a couple of weeks, and it's gone. Forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. The, the problem with sorry, guys. Oh no, I was gonna say. Well, no, no you, you go, you go, you because I, I mine, I mine, go, mine goes, mine goes, mine just goes in a slightly different direction. So you just, you just hit me with it. I was gonna say what well, Mike said about the stop working and living story, work on raids and fractals exclusively. I don't. I mean, that would be nice, but, like, I think a, a, a huge part of the people that play this game pretty much exclusively play Living Story. So, like, 
or you know like mess around in the maps right so it's like you know they fart around and open world content or some shit and ride their their mounts so it's like if you only work on raids and fractals like what are those players going to do what's yeah. going to keep those yeah. players entertained and i mean that's the majority of your player base probably yeah that's that's uh it's true unfortunately and yeah you do need stuff like this, like it for start to progress the story. But I don't know. Perhaps the older style of integrating it into old maps, like is it the maps that screw them over? I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know. I'm not sure what's really causing the problems with the with the content delivery system, if you will. Uh, it's it's kind of tricky. Well, I mean, why do you think they moved away from like the big meta? I mean, obviously when Hearththorns came out, there was a lot of complaints about them, right? But like. And I guess someone else said this, uh, I, thought it was, I was reading a Reddit thread and they were saying, you know, like, they don't want to run into the same issue they had with, like, the AV multi-loot problems and stuff. Um, but, I mean, do you think there's anything else that's sort of stopping them from creating maps with these huge meta events that, you know, it takes the whole map to do? Um, that's why people always go back to them. I, no, it's because they really don't want stuff on rails. I think stuff on rails actually does put people off to a certain extent. Um, it puts off the very casual player. Uh, they don't like stuff like them on rails. And like they also like there's a world boss timer where things more or less sync up and it's just like constant already. Like it's always filled with something. So like if you put more metas in, where does that stuff fit? So I mean that's probably an issue. I don't know. Yeah. The heart of Thorns metas are constantly going. Like they just loop all day. And it has, to, it has to be just very profitable as well. Like the, the it's, there's a reason why people do stuff like Tyrir and Istan, right? Like you just need that, you just need that cash, dude. That you need to make it worthwhile for people to do. Um, it, Nike, yeah, that's a, Nike says the new map has a meta, but it's bad and unfinished. It's just true. They didn't finish it. Obviously, they didn't finish it. They didn't finish Dragon Stand either. Dragon Stand has an entire lane and NPCs that don't exist and don't do anything there's the nightmare court lady you know how, you know how you get more people to play the uh living story yeah have a of voice act for everyone that's true actually that would work the asmr or, or just good writing which maybe oh, i mean yeah that too. Cool, but... what are you talking about that i'll have you know that writing is like the best that guild wars 2 has ever created okay oh yeah that's ever right. okay I read some articles the industry. that said that, so you're, I think you're correct. Actually, though, okay, I did actually really like the, the writing in the recent episode. It was really good. It, it entertained me. I know a lot of, maybe, uh, maybe I'm a little alone on this. I do think that, the, you know, Joko is funny. I have to say it, guys. I hate to say it. Joko was funny. It was, it was good. Really it was a good episode. I think the story was good. I think the writing was good in the, in the, in the, the recent, uh, the recent episode. So, well, you know, well, I'm reading it. But anyway, uh, well, let's. Let's just kind of redirect it back to the raids, and here's here's a question for Mel. Mel, okay, can the raid scene sustain <gasps> itself of one Mel raid here? every nine months? Can the what, Roy was talking over you? Sorry. Can we survive with one raid every nine months, Mel? Absolutely not. No matter what they do to balance, or I don't know, do to any other game mode, nine months for a raid is way way too long. Feels bad, man. Unless they make really huge meta changes and release well, good fractals, I guess. The raiders are just going to eventually go away. Let me ask you this. Would you rather see them change and like update the existing raids or make new raids? I think, well, making new ones obviously takes more work. So they could do some changes to the old ones. Like something that people have talked about for so long is adding challenge modes to old bosses mm. Mm. which i don't mind i actually don't mind that much like i i actually was talking about some challenge mode ideas with nico a really really long time ago like late at night i think there is some things you could do but uh, they would have to like split the team to make to add things to old bosses and then the new raid would take even longer to be delivered. It was it would just be a like even longer mess of people being frustrated and raids not being released for a while. Was, yeah. 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 The way you the, the only way that, that would work is that would be a really cool idea. I would love it. I would love it if every bot single boss had a hard mode. That would be amazing. Especially if it was repeatable and you'd end up doing every imagine doing oh, a yeah. oh a full like hard, hard mode, hard mode, mode clear every 
Um, this is an interesting idea, but I think it will be so difficult for ArenaNet to implement um, that it's just not possible. Again, I think it was this will be amazing. We talked about this a very long time ago. Um, actually, do you guys remember when it was like the Save Lions Arch event? Yeah. We, we talked about it on the tea time on the weekend that happened, actually. Um, we talked about having a, like, a moat that you'd vote on. So you're in a map. You, everyone votes to turn this map into a hard mode map, basically, right? Uh, two and a half years on Veil Guardian still kills us. Yeah, it's true. Fucking Papo Happy did. But yeah, I, imagine if you could have a challenge mode that turns the map into hard mode. It's more rewarding. It's hard. Um, the, the, the meta event is difficult. The bosses have mechanics. You actually have to do it well. You actually have to beat the map correctly in order to do it. Okay. Uh, and that would be amazing if there was more rewards. I think that would be such great content as well. You could almost, you could almost tie it into the guild system. Joke. Uh, and you, you have, you know, you take in your guild of 30, 40 people and you all have to beat this map on hard mode. That would be awesome, I think. It'd be really amazing. Did it in Guild Wars 1? Guild Wars 1 maps are very different, though. You go in there with eight people, um, and it's fully instanced. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that system doesn't work. Like, you can't apply hard mode, the same hard mode. It will not work at all, because it's, it's completely instanced for eight people. Um, well, you um, could just split the... Like, you could select hard mode, and then you go into a you know a separate instance than someone who selects normal mode. Um, you you, make it open world, you right? could. You, I mean, you you could, but I mean that that's very much against the spirit of the game, I think. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, I, I don't think that, and also that will probably be very difficult to, to implement. This is why I think that probably won't happen. Yeah. It will be amazing, but I think it's just very difficult for ReadNet to implement. But, um, yeah, I mean, certainly for, for raids and, and all that, it would be nice to, to have it, just because it would, it would immediately make replayability, like, you, you could play more, yeah. and it would also be yeah. a better challenge. Yeah. Suddenly, uh, open world is like potentially CM. relevant, right? Like open world could be so now you have you know your hardcore PVE guys, you do your fractals, you do your raids, right? But like imagine if it was achievements. Imagine imagine if it was the case that suddenly your hardcore PVE guys ha have to do all the you have to beat all the, the the maps all on hard mode. I mean, think how cool that would be. I'd love that shit. Um, that's kind of something that I do really miss from Guild Wars One. You don't have these big expansive maps where you have to go and defeat all these like, kind of yeah. this mid the, the, they're mid tier enemies, right? Like like hard mode in Guild Wars One, like you can kind of just face roll it to a certain extent, but like you can't you know you can't just like AFK, right? You still have to yeah. do stuff right. Uh, I think that would be really really awesome. That'd be amazing actually. Um, yeah, that would be very cool. What what do you think about hard mode, Mel? I think they could increase replayability very very easily, actually, just by making the game modes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the hard mode actually uh, repeatable. We all know this, but yeah. actually making them give reward and maybe give some sort of achievement to it. Like if you do Well Guardian hard, well, um, let's talk about the existing ones. Let's say if you do Summer Rock Challenge mode, like a hundred times, you get a new title. If you do it oh, 500 oh, times, shit. you get a new title. If you get like a thousand times, you get another title. And the cap yeah, is daily. Grind. So you, you can only do like one summer of CM a day or like one demo CM a day. And, and just think by the time you finish that achievement, the next raid will be halfway done. You, yeah. only get, um, you only get the rewards from the challenge mode weekly rather than daily. Mm. Because otherwise, I don't, yeah, know, I don't know how economy and everything would just explode into oblivion. Maybe like maybe not make it as good as the first rewards we've, we've had with like a lot of uh, consumables you can select and stuff, but maybe a little bit less reward, but it's still something because so many people have done like so many Doom CMs or like any art challenge modes with like groups that struggle and got absolutely nothing out of it. Mm. It's it's kind of sad. Um, but yeah, like for now they could easily just make them repeatable and then maybe put some sort of achievements. Like I said, for future, without even needing to add new challenge modes to old bosses if they don't really want to bother with that. Yeah, and old CMs will be great. I think the only way they could do that is by adding more staff to the raid team. I'm not. I'm just not sure if that's going to happen. Right? Uh, I'm not sure if I see it. Uh, I would love it if they if the raid team got more resources, more staff to work with. I think that would be amazing. Personally, I I think it would be really good for the game. I do think it would be really good for the game if you. Yeah. You end up with uh, more more repeatable more raids, end game content. Raids. Yeah, more fractals. The fractal and raid team are now the same thing as well, right? So I think it would be amazing if you can mix those. You know, you can get more yeah. of both of those. I think you can really get some good so shit in the game and they, attract people to the game too. They said that um, you know it's going to be 
what is it like every other living story release a raid wing and a fractal or something right so does that mean so the next living story release are that you think that's when the next raid wing is coming out or do you think it'll come out before then since we've been waiting for so long unfortunately i think that is going to be the case yeah um right. they are going to for some unusual reason they aren't even though the raid is probably done at this point they aren't going to release it for another two months for some ungodly reason well you know they don't want people to rush through the uh the content with the last living story release you know right. they want them to be able to take their time with it so you know i'd say four months i mean you might be able to finish the, the recent living story patch in four months also, I don't know why they removed the achievement to not die on like every single boss in a wing. I feel it's like that hard. would be still. Eh. They should have even made it harder. They should say that. Um, uh... Is it really hard though? Well, no, no, no. I mean, they should no. Yeah, they should make it harder. I mean, you if you die at all, you should fail. It should be like leaves no hero behind. In fact, right? Doom CM. They... No one gets picked. No pick Doom C. That would be a great achievement, though. Seriously, that would be a great achievement. Why not? Why isn't that in the game? You know, it's like, simple as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why not have that in the game? Like, if he picks you, you lose the achievement. You fail. Um, and yeah, stuff like that would be really awesome. I think. Um, but yeah. Um, like for people, for people that raid so much every day and every week, I think simple achievements like this would be, I don't know, make things less boring. I guess it gives you a little bit more of a reason to play raids. It's pretty simple stuff to add, I think. Like, it doesn't require, like, months and months of work just adding a simple achievements like that. Mm. Yeah, and as long as it, it's repeatable as well, like, have it have it repeatable in some way. Like, repeatability is the key to this stuff. Otherwise, people are just going to do it once and then just never do it again because it will be kind of annoying to do, right? Uh, but if you make it so that everyone has to do it all the time, then, yeah, suddenly you've got, so, suddenly you've got some fresh, repeatable content, you know? And Try on that note... Change color. Tiles to change color. BDO, boys. All right. How do we do f Raid God? Mela, what is the Raid God achievement? How do you, what, what's the, the epic grind to get that Raid do God achievement? Every, every single boss challenge mode 5,000 times. 5,000 times. Actually, having every single Raid achievement gives you Raid God and any three sets when any wing is available. But they need to add more achievements to it. Such as well, killing X boss in Challenge World like 5,000 times or whatever I was talking about earlier. Also, adding no leaves no hero behind the achievement in every wing. Like, I really think this is really easy stuff that they should add. I don't even know why they didn't yet. Maybe the reason why they're taking so long to release the new wing is because they are working on this kind of stuff. Maybe in the meantime, they just want, don't want to talk about it, but. I feel like maybe if they are doing stuff like this, it would be nice and they should maybe tease us about it a little bit. Mm. So you like being teased is what you're saying. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, look at his avatar. Ooh. Oh, who doesn't? I thought that was Ooh. a selfie. It is. That's actually just a camera. He's he's showing video right now. It's live. That's live. That's just that's smell. Yeah. Okay. Hi, mm. Mel. What, do, um, what are you doing after this tea time? Um, cool. Who knows? Ooh, he's got he's 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 streaming, but not on Twitch. Uh. It's just like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's found that yet. I don't know. I think honestly, Mel, you're too kind. Like Raid God needs to be way more aids than that. Okay, just every achievement. Are you kidding me? That's fucking easy mode. You can buy that shit. No, well, you gotta grind. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't mean every achievement currently available. I mean, adding the ones I was talking about earlier, like killing every single challenge mode like X number of times overall, like no right. leaves, no hero behind in every single wing. Wait, actually 5,000? You... Actually 5,000 CMs? Yeah. 5,000 CMs? Wait, five, five, wait well, every, every boss? A day? Wait, every boss 5,000? Every 5, single boss. 5,000 times. 5,000. Um, Wait. All right. Well, no, your hero opinions are relevant. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, I think I think it should be tied into winning the uh, the rating tournament. First, you know what'd be cool if challenge modes were repeatable multiple times a week, but every time you did them, the bosses got more HP and did more damage, but the rewards were the same. So you could just farm a full set of Doom's armor or whatever in a week, but like. Doom CM at the end of it, he has like 50 million HP 
and everything's basically a one shot. So you have to change up comps and use protection and actually like pay attention and stuff. And it resets every week. Yeah, it resets every week. But you can do it multiple times. You can do as much as you want per week. Like uh, old OG fractals where uh, the veteran ass colonial warrior would hit you for 40,000 damage with rush. And the monks would hit you for 25k with heal area. What a skill. Heal area. Hit you for 25,000 damage. I mean, stuff like that would be interesting. Yeah. It would. It would what be about monthly ATs for raids? Monthly uh, ATs, raid ATs. I mean, some kind of leaderboard would be, you know, the leader. Some kind of leaderboard would be pretty cool. You man. know what? 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 What would be really cool would be if like, F so F Zero GX did this, and there are probably other games that do too, where you could go in and fight against your ghost, race against, race against your ghost. Mm. And so, like, your best time, there's, like, a little slightly transparent version of you, and you race against oh, it. Oh, yeah. I was saying that. You did that in, like, Mario Kart, I think. Yeah, you could do that with uh, raids, but it's the other team you're raiding against at the same time. So you can figure out each other's strategies and see what's happening and what they're doing. Mm. You could link up. That'd be extremely you could cool use uh, guild halls Thanks. to organize it all. It's too hard to make, and they won't do it. And plus, they don't listen to ideas from the community, and they won't ever implement anything that anybody says. Here, here might be an interesting one. Okay, that I think maybe could be more more achievable. What if we just saw a lot more API integration with raids, right? Like, so, and then rely on third party sites. So, in the same way that build templates are effectively in the game. Just made by Mr. Delta Connected through ArcDPS. And they, and they delete your gear sometimes. It, it, it do, does it delete? I don't wait. Does it delete your gear? I'm not sure about that one, dude. Yeah, it can. I mean, can it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, Every I think time you're you die that. in a boss, you lose one piece of ascended. I have seen people complain about this as well, actually. Oh, but I yeah. oh shit. Myself, so. ArcDPS does a lot of interesting things oh no it's bagawan v2 oh, oh no delta is the oh, no, next no. bagawan dude oh, no, 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 no. oh it's, shit it's like bagawan i've never, I've never heard of any idiot when using bagawan 7.4 did he you know what the fuck uh and, and the and the malware is in fact back in the game right now by the way in case anyone didn't believe me it, it is so are you, well, I mean, how do you know? I've been talking to people that find these things out. Brazil has and you can also like just look at your processes while the game's running, too. Hmm. Well, so, I don't know about that one, but I mean, anti-cheat. If anti-cheat's in the game, that's fine if you ask me. Just don't hack, guys. Don't cheat. Don't be a hacker. Don't do it, guys. Hacking is too... Yeah, I mean, of, of all the games you hack in, you hack in Guild Wars Guild, 2, are you Guild Wars 2 isn't even worth hacking in, because it's like, you can put in minimal effort and be good enough at it, but there's, like, why would you even do it to begin with? I don't, I don't get it. Guild Wars 2 is interesting because it's like, what do you actually accomplish by cheating or breaking rules? Like, you don't really get anything out of it. Like, you can just buy gold from ArenaNet directly pretty reasonable price. I don't know why you would buy third party. Like there are actual fly hack mounts and gliding in the game now, so I mean why do you need that? Like there's this just I don't know. I don't get why Is people Is there any hackers? Yeah. In PvP, like recently? Probably. There been PvP? Any? Yeah, people still hack in PvP. Uh, yeah. Um I mean I don't know why. Yeah, there are still hackers, uh, but Brazil is still talking often. about <laughs> Bag of One. He didn't forgot how Bag Salp his ass live in T20. Salp. I would like to slap Brazil's ass. The debate, the Bag of One debate. I mean, you know, just just stay tuned, guys. You'll end up with the. Um, you will end up with the Delta Connected debate soon, so prepare yourselves. Um, but anyway, you know, uh, you know, on that note, I think that's why the API stuff, right? Like, why not have a more extensive raid API? Honestly, why not extend it to fractals as well? Like, it's we can not even a, the API could, guy is not even at the company anymore. No, they have some people working on the. Um, they have some people working on the API, so that's fine. 
And then yeah, they keep it, they keep it updated. Normally. And then imagine if Raider, like the guys who work on Raider, imagine if they had the ability to uh, kind of just ha generate these things without even having the logs, right? If it just came from the API, that would be pretty cool, right? Then they could do it for fractals as well. And then job done. You have now officially outsourced um, so something that should be in the game for free to people who will just do it for you for free. And that seems pretty good if you ask me. And hey, their UI is actually pretty nice as well. Um, you know, in, in GPS Gil meters in the API. Yeah, DP so DPS meters, okay. Uh, you know, that's been outsourced. Build templates, that's outsourced, okay. Uh, raid leaderboards is already kind of outsourced as well, so why not just go a step further and boom! Get those, uh, yeah. you know, just ch chuck it all that's, in the API. That's actually correct, because then you can have gear check and DPS be an opt-in system. If you don't want your stuff checked, then if you don't want your gear and build checked, if you don't want your DPS checked, okay. I'm not going to give you my API key. If you do, just have a program like Arc, but that runs off of API keys, and then, like, I mean, why, why, that, that's a good idea. Like, that's good. Make that. Uh, you, um, how would you implement such a thing? How would you give someone your API key? You have to paste it into chat or something, and then Arc no, reads it? Put, it? put it into the program. You, you put it into the program? program. But, but people yeah. won't have that program, though. Well, so now we're gonna start kicking people for not giving their API out, right? I mean, it's if be a whole new thing. People get kicked over low DPS or whatever, anyways. Well, I know, um, I know. I'm just saying it's another thing to you know yeah. complain about on Reddit. But it's know. an it's an opt-in. Well. And you could such a thing already exists. Yeah, there's already um like a, a gear, there's already a gear checky thing you write with the API, and I don't think anyone really uses it. But yeah, sure, you could um if you wanted to, you could make a group and say if you don't give me your API key, you just have to leave. And I don't think yeah. anyone would really argue with that because like, it's your group, your rules, right? Like if um I don't think that's really a problem. Um, the only kind of person who would be worried about being oppressed by this system is someone who runs shit gear. So it's kind of yeah, like, well exactly. Uh, well, that could just let you preview other players in game. Yes, no, that would correct. be good. I'm not gonna lie; that would probably be a pretty good thing. But I'm just not sure if that's ever going to happen. Unfortunately, yeah, that, sh that shouldn't be in Guild Wars Two. Why? Why not? Because I've seen enough people's gear to know that that's a very, very bad idea. Why? I'll just put it bluntly. So it's it was bad for me. It would be bad for you too if you went around doing it back when gear check was still a thing and everything was more or less a gray area. Because you'll go around looking at people's gear in Divinity's Reach and you'll see people with legendaries on that don't have stats selected and still have Sigil of Rage in them. I don't care them. about people's you'll, gear. You'll in see, you'll, you, you will, because you'll realize this is the people that play Guild Wars 2. You'll see people, I already know those are the people that play Guild Wars 2. But... It yeah, but it's it's, it's 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 soul crushing in multiple regards. Because oh, I, like, I, if you if you're playing is. this game with a the soul, then I don't know what's wrong with you. But yeah, <laughs> okay. Nah, I I, I think it'd be a good thing to do. Honestly, play. I mean, I think it would make. Nah, it's just I, look. I understand what you're saying, but like, I I'm aware those players exist, and right. you know they they can do whatever the fuck they want. You know, it's, if it exists, you know, it play. needs to be opt-in. It needs to be opt-in if it exists. Well, it kind of already does, and it already is opt-in in that respect, right? No, because I can see anyone's DPS anywhere. Oh, well, when it goes should, the DPS... If they're going to have malware in the game that detects if people... just what All processes that are running on your computer while you have Guild Wars 2 open, if we're going to go that far with it, then, like... And that's going to be in the game. Just get rid of memory readers say, no, you can't have this, and just have it done through the API, so it's completely opt-in. That's what it should be. Like that's, that's the correct way to do it. All of that tech is, is... I mean, I'm not a coder. I don't know anything about code, but, like, I don't see how that's a bad idea. Oh, I mean... Yeah, I suppose, I suppose not. I mean, there... I don't know. I don't really have a problem with everyone just being able to see everyone's DPS, really. I mean, if you, uh, if you suck, you should just get good. There you go. Brazil's not a code to be made BGDM. Brazil made BGDM. I, I, did not make, I did not make BGDM. I just made Bag of One. Yeah. <laughs> and, also, and also unmade him. I did both of those things. Yeah? Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, anyway. 
Do we, do we have anything else to talk about? Like, what's what else happened with the? Well, balance? we never we never really talked about the balance patch. I yeah, mean, there's, well, you know, we got a lot to talk about there. It, the, well, there really wasn't that much though when it comes to the actual oh, balance on, patch. Did hey, you, the, the can all the changes. The can, well, they made a lot of little changes, but the concern I have is that, and this is always the concern when Arena does a balance patch, especially seeing as we can actually probably not expect something for a very long time as well, which is really sad. Uh, Nothing is going to really change in a lot of game modes, really. Um, I mean, PvE did get a, a bit of a shake-up. Um, PvE did get a shake-up, right? But PvP is basically going to be the same. And that's kind of where the balance is most relevant, almost. Like, that, that's where the balance is the content. To it. Oh, but, I, but Jeeba, the, how, how can you say that, Jeeba? How can you, there is a patch. It has to be a change. The, the one thing that will happen in PvP, I guess, is that you are going to see... You're not really going to see SD Thieves... And you won't. You probably won't see Necro, or I, I. You'll see a lot less Necros anyway. I mean, I think that's a pretty big change, to be honest. No, yeah, I suppose. So it's you know, it's, it's, it's debatable, fact, right? I mean, that's. I I actually think if that's true, and again, I haven't been playing PvP recently. I think that's a huge change. If you take out SD Thief and you take out Scourge, I I think that's a really big change. If you take the, them out of the meta and kind of, but the I think I think the problem is less the <clears throat> the meta in, uh, in PvP and. I mean, I just think there's less people playing it, and there's less interest mm. in tournaments, and yeah. less of the competitive nature. And I mean, I there's like almost nobody queuing. And I'm maybe I'm gonna sound like a an asshole, but like there's no one good queuing anymore. You know, PvP. Um, like if you look at, you know, season five and shit, there were I don't think there was anyone in gold in the top two fifty, and now there's almost no one in legendary. Hmm. Yeah, as uh, people have lost interest, I th I think a little bit. I, yeah, th there's a lot of I, I know, and I already hate to say this, right? But I I just feel that there's quite a lot of anti fun in in PvP, right? Like stuff like I, I think like Mirage is like something that really turns people off, right? I, I think people play against that and they go like, well, this is shit, isn't it? Right? Like, they just don't want to. They just don't really want to talk about it. a bunch of PvPs talking about balance actually. Actually, Punishing Beast. Okay, uh, all th well, there's three I, of us here. We, there's three of us here who play PvP, and two of us play World vs. World. That's a I nice try, though, dude. Yeah. I play I'll have you know, I'm, I'm the, the worst PvP in the game. Yeah. In Thank fact, you. I am the best player in every game mode. I, I can yeah. confirm that. That's a mistake of a statement. Uh, but I mean, yeah. Self-proclaimed top player. Like, mo most of us play play everything here. Like the only person who is like really into he's he's dedicated PVE That's god. Amazing. It's Mala. It is Mala, the PVE raid lord. So there you go, right? Like uh, so, like, very foolish for you to say that. Now you look like an idiot. Um, and well, I'm not sorry actually. But anyway, uh, yeah, it is uh, to... uh, right. Click report stream. Yeah, <laughs> bullying feels bad, man. Uh, yeah. Where was I? Yeah, uh, the anti-fun. Like stuff like Spellbreaker, AIDS, right? Scourge, maybe less, but still, AIDS, right? And there's a lot of stuff that is very annoying I mean, for new players. But yeah, like, I, I mean, I don't know, it, it's difficult it's for, for players to get into it. Like, even even stuff like Firebrand, you could certainly argue is a little bit anti-fun, right? Like, it, like the, 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 how easy it is to res people, like, like stuff like the res signet, like the, the res trait, like the stuff is just very obnoxious. And I think there's a lot of work to be done, and I think it's very... It's going to be really hard to fix the fix the fun factor of the game. Like, I wouldn't even say that the game is particularly imbalanced. This is not even a criticism I would really level at Guild Wars 2 that much. I, I don't think the game has ever been that imbalanced in PvE. Like, yeah, Mirage was probably a little crazy, like SD Thief as well, right? But I wouldn't say it was like, oh, well, this is just like... It's like busted beyond belief. Like, it was just really, really good, right? And you know, Mirage is still great, and SD Thief not so much, right? But these these builds was I wouldn't say that the balance was ever appalling. It was just that it was very obnoxious and very anti fun. And th that was the, the epitome of that was definitely the the true glory days of Scourge Firebrand, and that probably like really pissed a lot of people out. Everyone was like, nope, fuck this, not playing versus Scourge Firebrand. This is just AIDS, uh, and I don't know. Uh, that's kind of the main problem with Path of Fire. I think Path of Fire brought a lot of stuff in that is very, uh, kind of, I think, like, the key thing is, like, it's not that difficult to execute, but it's very difficult to actually play against, and it, that is, like, the core of anti-fun. Like, it doesn't feel rewarding to play versus this stuff, uh, and it feels incredibly punishing 
to mess up versus this stuff is what I would say, right? And that, that is an inherent problem with, with the design of PvP in general. And a, a lot of that is about application and a lot of it is about burst. Like burst, it feels horrible to play against because like you fuck up once and you're instantly dead. Uh, and like reapplication is also, like an, again, another problem, like particularly with conditions and boons, right? You, you unleash your fat combo um, on a firebrand and boom, he instantly cleanses the entire team. It's like, well, that was fun. Like you kill a guy, you you unload all your dank cooldowns, right? To take take one guy out, and he instantly gets signated back up again, right? And then um and then when he goes down again, he gets res by the res trait. Uh, that stuff feels really bad to play against, right? Um, or just you know like how difficult it is to really kind of kill a mirage. Like you, you you have this guy running around going crazy, spraying his aids. Suddenly he's like halfway across the fucking map. Like stuff like that is just like ugh, ugh. It's very anti fun. Um and if they if that even possible to address at that point, I mean, it's kind of what they prioritize, like balance over actually enjoying the gameplay. It's a bit of a tricky one, really. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, no, res trades need to go. Or maybe just not be as strong. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I guess I would agree. There's not, like, that, there, haven't other, there haven't really been, I mean, balance patches are probably, like, the actual content for most game modes right like which we said i mean mm. there's not a lot of content for any of the game modes so you kind of look towards the balance patches of content which is not really a good thing uh i mean yeah i don't know i i don't enjoy queuing anymore i think a lot of people don't enjoy queuing anymore in pvp not that i've ever been like a you know exceptional player or anything but you know uh yeah I, why why play world versus world at all uh, Blood rubies, actually. Just don't play War vs. One. Yeah, I, I, I mean, until alliances come out, which we can maybe talk a little bit about now. Uh, what's the point? What is there's, there to there's talk nothing about? Nothing new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I was kidding. things like rest rates are actually really broken in PVE as well. Oh yeah. Oh my like, god. Can, the, uh, like example for me, like arcane resurrection on Ellie Ooh. is the most. Oh. It's yeah. the dumbest thing in the game. It's so good. Has, when you like, spend more has... time rezzing during a boss than actually playing. This game has a down state as well, and you put stuff like that on top of it. It just becomes mm. brainless, in my opinion. Yeah. What if there was like a cooldown on when you could be res? Like, if you get res, you can't then be res for another 10 seconds or something. Or, down, you know. There need to be actual penalties to down state, because right now it's just something that happens to bad players. Like, the, the, what incentive is there to, like, really, like, make a giant effort not to... Especially, especially since healers are a thing now. And healers can just hard carry groups. Like, do you, like... You go into fractals and you're just like, okay, the healer's just gonna heal me. I don't have to... You just heal. Raids. Okay, healers. And, and they're like, why? Why can't... Um, downstate should honestly just, like, either there shouldn't be downstate... Or you should go into downstate, and when you get rezzed, it puts like a revive orb buff on you, where you come up with fifty percent health, and everything is like you you get dazed, and everything is on a cooldown, and you're just like, oh, wh wow, this was a bad idea. Maybe I should learn to to dodge. Maybe I should uh, look at the screen, <laughs> stuff like that. Why? Like that should be a thing. It should have always been a thing. Don't sell penalties, and even in raids, is it? It is, yeah. I think. It is. I think it is. Yeah, I don't think there's any place that you don't have downstate penalty. But like, it's it's downstate is just like, oh, oops. Mm. That, that's all it is. They could nerf downstate in PVE. Well, tr like rest rates have to go. Like either way, yes. they're they just broken. To. Yeah. Yes. So, anyway, stuff like you know transfusion, um, the the necro uh, well of blood res trait, like this stuff is actually insane. Like it, it, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but in, in PVE, like the strongest support build is almost certainly heal necro with mercy well, runes. Uh, I so I like downstate like... stuff that like moves the player around, right? If that makes sense, so, like banishes, uh, transfusion. Like I think mm -hmm. I think downstate play. Is is actually an interesting part of the game. So obviously, I'm not really talking about PVE anymore. But but and I mean, I well, you could transfuse in PVE. I mean, you got some some very sick reses on demos. Uh, <laughs> teapot with the <laughs> uh, those carries, dude. Yeah. But like, oh, yeah. I think I think I think maybe making them not as strong, but I still think that like 
allowing you to play with them, so I think is a good thing. Um, I completely agree. Yeah, just especially not, in competitive. Not modes, necessarily yeah. able to resin, 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 resin. Like they're when you're like I, I said this before. Like when you're spending the entire fight resing as opposed to actually playing, you know, and then you still win. It's it's it seems like it's kind of. Mm. And there's been a lot of GVGs that I've been in where that's exactly what happens. Like you spend half, like the entire GVG just resing until mm. the enemy's like, "All right, fuck this, I'm dead." <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, and being able to like do stuff while resing maybe shouldn't be a thing as much. Um, you mm. know, being able to like use your utility skills and so, stuff, yeah. like still pop those yeah. off. Um, but, yeah. But yeah, I I don't think you should completely remove resing or downstate play because I, I think it's a really I, interesting I part agree. Of the game. Yeah. Mm. but i think definitely no, nerfing or, or mm. making making it harder to res making it so that you can't continuously res and res and res the same person would be a good thing yeah okay perry mentioned punish going down more it's because of a mastery in central Tyria that allows you to remove downstate penalty when you oh when you res someone yeah hmm. so nice I, one, Mel. that i knew should, there was a reason Mel was on t-time that should go away in yeah. raids, at least. That, yeah, that's a big good problem. idea. This is actually this would, this would. Wow, this would actually help balance PvP, PvP and Orbs a lot. So the debuff to going into downstate and getting res it would be like slow, like a condition, and you can epidemic it onto other <laughs> people. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no, yeah. wait, wait, no. No, no, Brazil. A, someone goes down, you down someone, and they come up and they have the down state condition on them, and it dazes them for like 10 seconds, and they have 10% total HP, and their movement is slowed, and you can epidemic it on other people, and they get the same condition. Well, but why? That's correct. That fixes the down state traits, that fixes the res traits, first of all. That fixes mercy runes. That fixes all the stuff. And no, the downstate play aren't a thing is anymore. still there. Well, yes, they are. But anyways. Mm, not really. It is, that where, just solves where, the problem. Where are mercy runes still used? Ask t about that one. Well, it, 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 it's, it's heal, heal necro in PvE, man. Mercy runes actually okay. broken. Because mercy runes... So dude, mercy they're, used, they're used one, in one, mercy in one runes, place. It, it's, it's, it, the, the mercy rune interaction with transfusion is really stupid. I... I I didn't actually know it was this way until I tried this, but uh, even if I mean, sure, but it, that's it. Like, oh, it's, it's not. So it's not like used it's everywhere. So it used to be used everywhere. Now it's not. It's so good. It's not in PvP. If know. if any, if like one little trickle of the mercy and touches you, you get it back up on eighty percent. It's uh, it's really juicy. So wait, what you don't, is you it? don't want mercy runes on on Firebrand World of this world. That's wrong. You don't Trend. want mercy runes anymore in World of this world. Transfusion, how, what's the interaction with Mercy Runes on that? If any of the pulses touch someone, um, it, it counts as being rezzed. Okay. Right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. It, it doesn't see widespread play like as, as it used to, right? Like Before, it was like all the Guardians. It was just like this AIDS fiesta, like res, res fiesta, in, especially in World vs. World. Right? But I, again, even in World vs. World, there, there's really kind of stupid stuff like that. Uh, sort of like illusion of life is gets played a lot right now. Like that's just oh my god. Illusion of life what, is actually broken. What is because this? It gives like, you invulnerability for five yeah. seconds after getting res. That's retarded. It's like what is that going on? Like, what, what is this? I mean, like you know, because like, yeah, um, and um, stuff like merciful. Like you have all your guardians just like insta res someone with merciful. It's just because it's twenty percent in world versus world. So like this stuff is just crazy, right? Like the 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 res power is insane, and yeah. the, it, it's like that plus the healing capacity. Like before, it's kind of okay. It's almost kind of okay because there wasn't really a lot of like, very like mega power healers like big power healers in um in uh pvp and world as well like even even stuff like tempest right like was never on the level of what firebrand is right now in terms uh, of like like mega healing right no if i'd agree with that during heart of thorns tempest was very strong it was very obnoxious yeah but like the firebrand i would say is mm -hmm. on another level dude yeah but tempest was still very very good as a healer Yes, but I mean, if you if you compare like the healing, if you compare the healing output of Dagger Focus um, Ellie to Firebrand, I don't think it's even close actually. Okay. I think Firebrand, and in terms of boon support as well, like the boon support is way stronger on the Firebrand as well. So. Oh yeah, um, yeah. sure. Firebrand is stronger. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I don't, no, yeah, in, in, I, like, like both you still had healers, is what I'm saying. Like. Yeah, the, still the healers are better now. Strong either. 
Right, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. The, the, the heals are better. And then on top of that, they kind of power crap the, the resing as well. Like, this is what base is here. Like, the, yeah, Tempest, was wa Tempest was way better back then because there was also just way less aids as well. Like, the, like Tempest can't really keep up that well in the day. Well, I mean, maybe it can a bit now after that Scourge has been. I, no, I, Tempest is still very good. It's just not used um, as a healer specifically. Yeah. That's well. not his role in, in World War II's role, in my opinion. It's no. used for the MOB and PC. Oh, that, oh, that juicy, that juicy amount of that arc with the arcane trait, is that? Yeah. Oh, mm, that's some sauce right there, guys. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's just when you have that massive healing, the, the really strong support potential of, of the fiber, and then when you kind of couple that with how easy it is to res and how they've kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to stomp people because of all the CC spam. There's stuff like the res trait that knocks you away from the body as well. Like, uh, like the, the Guardian's going to have stability all the time to res, so it's kind of hard to interrupt them. Stuff like the Signet, where you have like a ranged instant revive on someone. Uh, combined with all the healing and all the resustain, it's, it's just, it's just, it, it makes for unfun gameplay, right? Like it, it's, it kind of, it, it makes Unfun it, to play against. Yeah, I, and the key... The the gold the golden goose of game right like they make it to really be um, you know the golden egg if you will or the the holy grail of game design is to have something that's fun to play and fun to play against. Mella changed his picture to meteor sprinkle. Oh, yeah, I think that's the big problem with um, a lot of stuff in PvP and World vs. War is that it's kind of unfun to play against, right? It's um, it's just it just feels bad, man. It's pretty feels bad, man. Remember, reminder, output healing percent works with resurrect stuff. I don't think that's true. So, no, I don't think that is true. Maybe yeah, it does. Um, Wait, who said like that? Like the Guardian, or Firebrand Tome 2-5 uh, interacts with something. Like, uh, I don't know if it interacts with Merciful still. It did at one point. Um, but, it, yeah, it makes, like, heal and res output stronger. Um, when you, certain, certain res outputs, anyways. Um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting Well, It makes thing. Merciful res faster? No, no, not faster, stronger. Like Wait. the 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 percent. It makes the it, it makes the it makes the percent stronger. That's pretty disgusting. That's pretty OP actually. It did at one point, like I said. That I really I shouldn't have. I, I I expect it does, but. Oh god, that yeah, that that definitely shouldn't happen. That uh, I suppose I suppose because of the way it works. So the way it works is it restores a certain amount of HP. To, yeah, exactly. To to a target, right? Like in downstate. Oh yeah. god, that's so, that's fucking you disgusting. Have, you have a health bar when you go into downstate. Oh so, dear lord, that's absolutely terrible if that's the you. case. Well, no wonder it's so cancerous then. Ugh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Ugh. you can if you have if you have enough healing modifiers, you can res someone alone with one merciful. Um. So, yeah. It is. It is definitely. There's a lot more res. I guess, for lack of a better term, like things. There are a lot, there are a lot more resurrection things going on since Path of Fire. Like you didn't run Merciful before. I mean, obviously, you didn't have the resurrection capability on it, but now you're running Merciful. You know, now you run Illusion of Life. Uh, PP run the, Mer the the Merciful Signet. Um, your transfusion is now meta in NA. Um, and before you had. I mean, the only interaction you really had with Downstates were you had Banish and Blink Stomp, um, which was I actually thought was really, really good. I thought that was really fun. And then obviously you had Mercy Runes, um, resing people instantly. And that's why you had a Mai, because you had a Mai to people and Mercy Rune them. But um, everything is about like getting Downstates up now um, with utilities and, and stuff. Uh, and it's it's very interesting. It definitely seems like it's too strong in, in World vs. World uh, at times. Like I mean, Illusion of Life is definitely broken, in my opinion. It, What's the range on it? 900, 1200? And yeah. it gives you invul for five seconds after you... It's just so stupid. You literally can't die for five seconds after you've been Illusion of Life. I think the way they could balance Illusion of Life is that... It, the, the problem with Illusion of Life, in my opinion, is that it puts you back in downstate after it runs out. It should be like a trade-off. It should be more like Vengeance in Guild Wars 1. Like you just full die. It doesn't do that anymore? No, you, you you just drop in downstate right now. Um, after the fifteen right. seconds. Right. Oh, you you mean like full dead state? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think you should oh, just okay. like I, I think I think you should just like unless you unless you kill someone, you just fall over, right? Yeah. I think that would be a pretty fair way to balance that. And obviously, the invuln should probably be removed as well. Like, yeah, I did. I didn't even know it did that. That was ridiculous, right? That's that's insane if that's the case. Uh, but yeah, you know, it should definitely um, it, it should definitely just make you fall over. Well, that would be that. That's the res trait, the 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 res skills should just kill you. Instead of resing, wait, <laughs> no, no, you can't just can't just use stuff oh, to dude, kill you. What if, 
What if MI, if you MI to an enemy, no, no, it deleted twenty no, percent no, 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 no. of their health? Oh my god! They have, no. a, they have a they they have a chance to fail. They have a chance to fail, and instead of resing, it full deads the target. RNG boys, let's go. No, I would. That would actually be awful. No, that but... would be good. That would be balanced. That would be correct. And no one would use it then. No, you would use it, or it downs the person casting it. If you get interrupted while you're casting it, it puts you into down state. <laughs> this is a real counterplay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, let's go. But I, I don't know. That's kind of my thoughts on the general state of the game. We've, we've. It's kind of an echo of some other stuff to a certain extent. Um, that's. We, we've said this stuff before. Like the a big problem is that stuff feels annoying to play against, and I think that's that's why some people um, have become disheartened with it. It's kind of a vicious cycle, though, as well. I have, it, kind of the 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 higher end of the player base gets frustrated with the um, with the the balance or how the gameplay is, and, and it kind of trickles down to a certain extent. Like people, um, you you eventually kind of like less people end up queuing. Um, people stop really caring about getting good. They're just in there, there for rewards. It's kind of in, you know endemic to the community as well. And then just the the, the player base kind of decays, right? And that. Uh, it's also happening in the other game modes to a certain extent uh, as well, right? Like, if people don't find it fun, then people start stop doing it just because they like doing it, and they start doing it just because they like getting shiny things, and and that's just never really a good state for the game to be in, in my opinion. If you're, participation rewards. If you're only going for those shinies, rewards. then it's just no good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, Nara. I don't think the balance is exactly bad. I think the balance is kind of okay. I just, th I just don't think that the... the um, I think there's a lot of stuff that isn't very fun to play against right now. Uh, well, and that's been the case for a while. So I think Path of Fire introduced a lot of things that aren't. A lot also, of fun. I mean, like, there's not again. There haven't been up. Like, we haven't. We still don't have Swiss. We still don't have the two v twos that have mm. been. You know, we've been talking about forever. Uh, there haven't been seasons in World versus World. We've been waiting on alliances for a ridiculously long time. There hasn't been a new raid wing in eight months. The last fractal was more like a jumping puzzle or something, and it, you know. It, it's just it's terrible. But where, where's the, like honestly? I mean, where's the content? I just I don't know. Mm, yeah, it doesn't it, there's there just hasn't been a lot to do, and there hasn't been a lot to sort of refresh the game modes. Uh, you know, I mean, we've had more living story updates in the past year than anything else, and those take an hour to finish. Yeah, so, what's the? They're uh, they're they're either making the best content ever. They're gonna blow us away with a new expansion, or something. You know, you know what like I that, think. Or they're just actually not doing anything. Could you be. Know what I think easily could be either. What? what do you I think? think. I don't actually care. To... I thank you, Brazil. You know, Brazil. I'm glad you're here. By the way, I just want to say that, and I'm glad you're back, Brazil. Yeah, I missed you. Feels even though famous. I didn't tell you before. But, anyways, uh. I think they're trying to kill tea time because if there's no content in game, there's no tea content. Yeah, in game. that's true. That's true. Actually, that's a good point. Yeah, they got us good. Um, and again, I, I, not to not to be a dead horse, but the, the problem is is the lack of communication. What really frustrates people is the fact that no one knows what's going on. Right? Uh, there well, was some. That, that's probably true for them too. They probably have no idea. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. But, uh, maybe, well, yeah. Maybe. 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 No, it could be true as well. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I mean yeah, this, like, what could actually be the reason? It could like, be. I, I don't even, I don't even mean that as an insult. Like, it's just, it's, I imagine it's got to be chaos over there. Like, you probably have people. Like, it, the new map is half finished. You probably have people that are like done with content. They make stuff, and, and then somebody comes in and says, "Redo it," or "That's not going to work," or. And then you, they're scrambling to change it, or just stop working on that. No one's going to do that. Just work on this instead. After it's almost like there's there's probably all sorts of just horrible hell like that. So it's it, like yeah, I mean I don't know. Horrible hell. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, that's a bit sad, isn't it? I, I feel like we I feel like when, this T term has been a little bit on the negative side, guys. But you know that's okay. You know we can't always be PMA. You know, it's very well. Rare. You know what we can be PMA about? They released a uh, post about uh, alliances. A beetle skin mount. Oh, okay. uh, a mount for beetles. Yeah, the the armadillo yeah, skin. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm surprised. I mean, we could talk about that for hours. Hours. 
Actually, we could, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just do that right now. Oh, boy. Oh boy. So they, they've, they've just gone straight into straight, straight into the money grab right away with the roller beetle. They put them out in the game, and like instantly, like two weeks later, there's a skin for it. And the strategy with, with skins like this is who really cares about an armadillo beetle? Nobody. Excuse me? No, 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 no. No, no, no. So... You put in a skin that literally no one cares about, and everyone is going to skin over. So they oh, buy it because they're like, a, a beetle skin. I'm going to buy the beetle skin. This is, I'm going to spend 2,000 gems on there, or however much it costs, on the beetle skin. And so then it's an armadillo. There are there even armadillos in Guild Wars 2? I don't. I, yes. I think there are. Yeah. They're ambient. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, they're like, yeah, like you can little kill. neutral creatures that get one shot by walking over them. Yeah. But like. So they, they go for the skin that nobody cares about. You know, Brazil, you make a better skin, okay? okay see, well. that's where I'm going next. And then the next skin oh. is going to be something like a quaggin. And people... Ooh. You, oh. have to, you, you have to make the skin that nobody wants, that people buy anyways because it's new. And then oh, you start going into the, just, skins, the, okay? the, 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 just the home runs, and you buy the quaggin. And so that way you're really buying two skins, but you're only just using one. So you really only care about the quaggin. And people are like... I'm not ever buying another Roller Beetle skin. I have my Roller Quaggin, and then the Choya, and then the Choya. And so then people buy the Choya skin, and then you just keep getting it, and then you just dunk another one in there that nobody cares about, and you just kind of loop that cycle. So you get people to buy every single skin that comes out, and it's very clever. They just went instantly, just Roller Beetle instantly into it, just snap, just immediately. Yeah, that's a nice snapping, dude. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Snap. That's a lot I, of money. I'm terrible at snapping. Okay, snaps. Well, I mean, that's good because we buy the the mount skins, and then they take that money and they put it into the game. They recycle, you know, for content. I mean, it's that's what's been happening. They put it straight into severance packages. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, what? That's how you Brazil bringing the uh, bringing the fire here. Yeah. And we're taking, you know, once again, to steer it, you know, a little bit of a tangent there, maybe we steer that back towards the, uh, you know, the meme, like, yeah, mount skins are, again, they're not really impacting on the content, let's be honest, they did, like, let's be real, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, your, your raid isn't gonna get delayed because they put a fucking armadillo skin in the game, if anything, uh, you're, you're, no. are you sure about that? If, yeah, are I'm pretty sure, sure about, about that? that, if anything, that, listen, buddy, really? okay? Well, it, let's think about this, how many raid wings have come out since PF? how many mount skins oh, have come out? Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, that's true. Do actually, the math, buddy. that's true. It's a lot of mount skins and not a lot of uh, not a lot of raid wings. That is, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. How long did it take to code the the new mount? Like Ooh. since two thousand twelve. Uh, I I don't know, but it, I reckon it was probably very difficult to implement thanks to the physics. Now that the time over, right? of coding, the new, now that the time for coding the new mount is over, maybe those people will do something else. Maybe. Why? Well, I don't know. There's, uh, there's been nothing aside from the mount and the new mount skin, and well, a small part. What about the I next mount, though? Oh my I God. don't. I, mm. Yeah, yeah. What about that? Hey, we, we didn't think there was gonna be a new mount, and then they gave us the beetle. All mm. right. Yeah. I don't think there's gonna be a new mount, and I also don't think there are gonna be any more elite specializations, at least until after the next expansion. Well, yeah. Of course I think they're gonna, gonna add. Yeah. No, they're gonna add three new professions. Oh yeah. Ooh. Really? I don't... You think yeah. so? The new heavy they said for a while game. they weren't going to do that. Yeah, yeah, but they were wrong. Yeah. Alright. Well... I okay. mean, do you, do, you think, do you think when they add three new professions, they'll add them with three specializations? They'll have... Yeah, they'll have core and then two specializations. Oh, I mean, that would be interesting. Um, but I... Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. But I just... I, I don't know. I, what? That's all in the future. Like, well, no, stuff it's, now. it's because uh, it's, a, it's a really good idea. Because if you want X specialization for the new class, you get the core class of the new expansion. If you want the Path of Fire specialization, you have to go buy Path of Fire. And you want the Heart of Thorns, and you have to go buy Heart of Thorns. So you have to pay. You, you have to buy three expansions for the new profession. Like. It, they're, no, gonna, they're not no, gonna no, sure, no. Sure. they're never they, adding they are they're never they're, adding they're, that's no. what they're doing they will never add th more professions to the game that's way too much work it's we'll, literally we'll, see. We'll, we'll, well let, let's we i have a 100 percent track record of being correct oh really yeah what have you been right about before yes. 
<laughs> tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Whenever the Quaggan Beetle skin is out in two weeks, well, of course and it's going to be a Quaggan. Dude, of course Maybe it's going to be a Quaggan. Dude, of course what it's going to be a Quaggan skin. Dude, of course it's going to be a Quaggan skin. Works for Arena. Right. Yeah, there's obviously going to be a Quaggan, but that's easy money, dude. And the Choya as well. It's free money. Like, of course they're going to do something. Here's, like here's the thing. Here's the, when when you're around business tyrants that have absolutely no soul. And everything they look at it and see is just a dollar sign. Like their eyeballs are literally just dollar signs. But well, who you are you talking out, about now, Brazil? I'm talking about scary people that you should be glad that you've never encountered. <laughs> so I mean, well, there's no one like that. I, I get, I, I, I get the business thing. I, I understand the the money grab game. So this is the three new professions, and you have to buy Heart of Thorns and Path of the Fire to get the specializations for them. Well, okay. at least, well, <laughs> at least, at least they'll be balanced when they yeah. come out. Yeah, we great. The balance will be terrific. Uh, well, I'll go further with that. The uh, light profession will be completely broken, just like necromancer and nah, mesmer so. and oh, elementalist. They're, they're never the going to right. No, it will be. They just they're just never going to add any any more professions. No, they will. It's, it's they'll, literally. They'll, they'll do it. <laughs> The light, what if, the light what if the is going to be... What if the next expansion is just Guild Wars 1 with updated graphics? No, oh my god. Be. The light is going to be like some melee weird support thing. It's just busted as hell. Medium is going to be like a medium armor class. It's going to wear a hat or something. It's not meaningful. And then and, and then the, the heavy profession is going to be like super ranged... Just busted DPS and it'll get nerfed almost instantly because it'll come in and test it. That's how far I'm taking those predictions. Wake me up in, you know, a year or whenever the expansion's out. Hey, and I'm Brazil, ready. what's your favorite kind of hat? I'm just curious. Ass hats. What, what kind of hat is that? I've never heard of that. Is that a Texas oh, thing? I can show you, right? Oh, no? there you go. Oh? Okay. Wait, what are, what are you doing? Ah, just put an emote in chat. Oh, the emote? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, a Mela, is that a Mela supplement? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. It, it, you know, that is very well, interesting. You know, this this is all nice, but again, I this is all in the future. This is yeah. all posturing, and I hypothesis. No, it's, it's, yes, it this is. is a, Brazil, correct, you don't have a league. This is but, a correct no. prediction of a business model that okay, has been that's... predictable thus far. It's not. It's it's not even a hypothesis. And how long would this happen? It's an analysis of trends. And right, when, when do we get when do we get the new professions? Yeah. With the next expansion. No. Well, when is right. That? No. 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 That is I enough. It's now. enough about this. This is not happening, guys. Okay. Right. One last thing for this tea time. We're gonna talk about the upcoming stuff um, that has kind of been said but isn't happening yet. Okay. And that is gonna be alliances and Swiss, guys. Okay. Right. And the tournament oh, yeah. updates. We have heard some stuff about this. Okay. They have said that a lot of the back end stuff for the. Uh, the 80s has been reworked already. It was actually coming in this patch. Um, well, the patch that happened previously. Uh, which is great to hear, but we still have no real news on when Swiss is actually going to happen. Um, which is sad. And the Alliance thing, we did actually get a quite nice Alliance update post. It didn't really give us any um, new information about it. But that's, to be fair, that's because we already have a pretty good idea of what's going on with regards to Alliances. What's going to happen uh, with Alliances. Uh, but... We did kind of find out how much they've done, it, They, uh, how what the progress is like, although that doesn't necessarily mean we know when it's going to come, because Arena and progress, you know, it can, you can, it can be, um, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you, they, they can have voice acting and the raid wing might, might not just come out for three months, you know, like, you, you, progress is irrelevant, apparently, but... Uh, it, so it's good to know that they have kind of done a lot of the... They just basically haven't done the UI stuff for alliances. Like, they haven't really started on that. They're working on the actual systems itself, which is, you know... I don't know, that kind of makes sense. But uh, that makes a lot of sense, I think. But um, I don't know. I, I would love to hear more communication on this. Again, especially from the raid side as well. Like they're, One of the biggest unanswered questions to me in the AMA, and it was like the most important one to me, was I, are we going to confirm the fact... Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Like, why is the fact that the, the release cadence of raids, why is that not confirmed, right? Like, we don't really know what's actually going on there. Um, we have no nice idea when it's coming. Right? And that's the same with, with Atlantis. I would love to have a more solid 
uh, schedule with what's going on with the Lions. I think, um, well, I, 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 as I understand it, World War does kind of quieten down over the summer anyway, and it comes back a little bit later, which is, you know, that's fine. I mean, that's just, that's just how it goes. That's people, right? Uh, but I, I think people are really excited for it, and a lot of people will come back in preparation for alliances to get ready for it. But I have a terrible feeling that it's kind of got, it's just going to get dropped on us like two weeks in advance. Like, yep, here's alliances, by the way, guys. Like, uh, that that actually does kind of scare me. Like, that will be fine for Swiss tournaments, I think, and, and the, maybe the two v two stuff that can just come out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, but Swiss I think tournaments, the sooner they come, the better. Yeah, but with, with regards to a massive feature overhaul of one of the three main game modes in. In um, Guild Wars 2, I thought there should be a massive ramp up to that with regards to alliances, right? And I, I'm just not sure if Arena's going to deliver on the communication. That's what I'm worried about. I think it's going to be kept very. Yeah, un they I, definitely I, need to give people warning. I'm, um, yeah, I'm a little worried that it's going to be kept very much under wraps, which is not good. I don't think. I mean, yeah, I I would still rather that it just comes out soon, though. I mean, which it doesn't seem like it is, but and, and this is kind of what I was trying to say is like I don't. We have all this upcoming stuff that we've been talking about for a long time, and we haven't really had anything in the meantime. Um, and mm. I just, I think it's making the game pretty stale. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the community frustration is, again, from not really knowing what's going on. Like When you don't have any of this communication happening, it's difficult to see. It, it makes the game look deader than it is, you know, especially to the out, the outside onlooker, you think? I, I think, anyway. Um, it, yeah, we had, a, we had a good conversation about that last week. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I know, we, we did have a, an, an, a very good uh, conversation about this exact topic. Without stuff looking like it's happening, without announcement, without any kind of hype, it makes Guild Wars 2 look a lot deader than it actually is. Because I certainly wouldn't consider this a dead game. Uh, quite the opposite, quite to the contrary. So it's very very much an alive game. Um, but the, tr the, the trouble is, is how the optics of it, right? Like how it looks to to the outside world. And, and hype is really important, right? Like, hype is a massive deal. Like, especially with MMOs, in my opinion. Like, um, kind of getting the community going, going crazy, means that even if it's not even that good, you can still get people playing it, you know? Like, hype can really carry a game. Um, and it kind of did with with, um, well, with Heart of Thorns, although the train crashed a little bit too hard. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was good. I don't think there were even uh, tracks made, to be honest, but... Yeah. Well, yeah. It was kind of like they just kind of put the train and just said, full speed ahead, let's go. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's a shame to see that, it, I don't know, in my opinion, it does get a little bit mishandled and they should hype the game really hard because there's a lot of stuff to, there's a lot of stuff in theory to be excited about. There's a new raid wing coming. Okay, that's pretty exciting, right? There's, four months. Yeah. There, there's 2v2 tournaments coming, which is really hype if you ask me. That's like massive for the PvP scene. That's huge. Like, where's the hype on that? There's alliances. They're reworking an entire system to better reflect the game's title, Guild Wars, okay, right? Where's the hype on that? It, it's just like, what, 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 the, what the fuck? Like they're, they're adding three the new problem, professions. The problem with, with that the is they expansion. can't. It was very hype when they announced it, but they can't keep it hyped for six months. Like, yeah, I mean, it just it's taking too long. I mean, and I understand it's a ton of work to do, uh, you know, but it's just it's taking too long. I really think it's taking too long. It takes way too long for stuff to get released. Yeah, yeah, it does. Why? It's it, been the only time where there's been like nothing for like six months or longer. Or Has this no? When Heart of Thorns came out, they didn't do anything for a year. I remember that actually. But everyone I, uh, I kept playing the Heart of Thorns maps. Like it was, I think it was a. Okay yeah, because multi loot to rear was just busted. Well, when when did they release the Raid Wings after Heart of Thorns? Because it wasn't a year. No, it was like a month, I think. It was in November, I believe, if I recall. I wouldn't say there was nothing. And I mean, to be no, fair, no, I think Heart of Thorns is... No, 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 no. Living Story didn't come out for literally a year. After well, Heart of Thorns. I mean, but that's okay. I don't, you know. I, the, maps, the maps gave everyone enough to do in open world and, and stuff. Um, I don't know. I... I I think I think here, like you just you don't really you didn't. We, I don't think we got as much with PUF as we did with Heart of Thorns, and I don't think there's been enough uh, yeah, as I much agree. in between at least. I um, agree. And also, I mean, while I don't again, I agree with you, Tiba. I don't think this game is dead. There was definitely a larger population in and PVP in World of World specifically um, when Heart of Thorns released, and so that made it just playing better. Because I mean, I think a, a big reason that PVP is unfun to play right now is because the population is so small, and again, it's just not competitive. Um, and 
sort of same with World vs. World. When you don't have any, when you don't have anything to fight, what are you supposed to do? I mean, fight so arena. Comic- yeah. It's, it's good content. Yeah. I've been doing yeah. it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> plus, plus, raids were new, right? Raids were newer back then. Um, yeah. And I think that I think that it, while I'm not necessarily saying that like Wing Two is harder than Wing Five or something, but back then, you know, the raiding community wasn't as established. Mm. Um. So meta builds for raids weren't necessarily as established. Uh, not that it necessarily took a long time. And I, I mean, I wasn't really into raiding back then, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. But like, you have to imagine that it was a newer thing, so there was probably more. It was sort of more content than it raids. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, um, the, the stuff, and it's even worse because there's almost like a greater skill gap between. I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, it's hard to say this without sounding egotistical, right? But there's a greater skill gap between like the the top and the bottom these days right um so it, it, it for the for the the more skilled players or like rather the more hardcore players is a better way of putting it um you can you kind of eat through stuff a lot quicker because there's a lot of strategies you can do to make things easier for yourself right um and that just didn't really exist like when, when everyone was running around with basically like no boons like no buffs like no one really knew what the hell was going on like yeah everything seemed really hard right and like whoa my god this is ins- this is crazy uh, but the, you what know the, you, the other the other thing are, is no 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 wait wait, wait. What, go, go. what are you specifically addressing with that I would say that um, it, uh, uh, what I'm saying is, if they released Wing One again, uh, I, I can agree. if they released Veil vale Guardian um, today, people would probably consider it um, a massive joke and consider, uh, or would compare it to Wing Four. I would say um, the same problems that Wing Four faces would be suffered by Wing One if Wing One was released again today, uh, because the Are mecha- you sure about that? Yes, very sure actually. Because I agree. Um, but, but I agree, yeah. if those, what if those mechanics never existed? Is, because no, they- no, 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 shh. Look, look. This, is, this, is, this has always been a thing. Like the 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 reason why like dungeons were completely trivialized. People see people think that elite specialization power creep like completely deleted dungeons. But the problem is that it was break bars. Break bars are what just ruined dungeons beyond repair. Because people figured out like back when we were making dungeon tutorials in 2012, like we figured out like how to beat PvE. Like you stand in this corner or you just run up on top of this boss and put down Wall of Reflect, and then you just make boons. Everything just makes a boon. Like, Warriors with Forceful Greatsword and for Great Justice, for Fury on everybody. And we're like, that's always been a thing where, like, top-tier skilled players are always just miles above everybody else because the the top-tier skilled players, what really sets them apart is that they put in half an hour to go practice something and they also read their tool tips and use berserkers armor those are the three things that makes a good player you put in half an hour of practice you read your tool tip and you use berserkers armor and then you just go do the content and the rest of the people don't get that far and so like it's always been the same problem like that's always been the case i don't like break bars or what really just mess every break bars and healers messed everything up no, oh no no like no uh, uh, no Roy Roy is right what what Roy was saying here is completely correct like people just sucked back then in terms of the raid scene right um it, it's not it's not I mean, it's not it's not I mean <laughs> break bars and dungeons probably fucked stuff but then it was already pretty fucked before that as well like if you were a good player like, the thing is is this that when yeah, I don't when... think dungeons have really been relevant in for years like I don't I think, I think they were no dying updraft, out for a while. Snow Crows did no updraft Gorse of all like the week it was out. Yeah, but it, but it was an achievement then. Like now it's a fucking joke and you can do it with four yeah, people. I mean, because like, people <laughs> saw that it was possible. Here's the thing. So when people see something, see that something is possible, suddenly they start doing it. So like if nobody watched YouTube video, like it, I, I'm I'm really confused by this and I'm like I, this is this is this is puzzling because people like some guild gets an idea and like it slowly starts to build it's just a progression of people figure out how to do th- do new things and more things because there's like no content and what do you do you just figure stuff out and so they make a video about it and post it and then people think yeah why why would we even do updrafts on Gorsifal? let's just press our buttons a little bit more 
and let's stop being afraid of raids because we did them once and now we realize we don't need to use soldier's armor anymore or whatever the case is or the druids can heal let's just press one in celestial avatar and like there are probably less damage buffs overall now because grace of the land got deleted like elemental this has gotten nerfed 75 times like they're they're taking stuff out like pinpoint distribution apparently according to snow crows isn't worth taking anymore garbage like, they're 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 like damage bonuses that have been removed but people do stuff faster because people figure stuff out. People finally, it took them since 2012 to realize that bouncing epidemic is a good strategy. Why, like, people just figure stuff out and get bored and figure something else out. Like, that, that's, that's what's happening. It's, it's what's, your, what's your point, though? I guess. Yeah, I mean, where are you going? I, mean, I, I don't, the, I don't the, disagree. The point, the point is that there's, like, this, like, skill gap between, like, whatever skill gap you're talking about, it's not real. Like that's it's always it's been the same as it always it's always been like that. I don't. Okay, I think I think what Roy said isn't wrong, but it's to be expected. Like, of course, something has been out for so long, and it's gonna be easier for other people, yeah, of course. For, for like hardcore players. But that's not an excuse for content to be delayed. Mm. No. Like that. Oh no 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 yeah. no no. no. Uh, this... I wasn't I wasn't saying that. I think this is why content is delayed. I was just saying I think that's why. It might have seemed like there was more content. Yes, I mean, there, yeah. I think there was, but it also there was a bigger effect. And the other, the other thing about it as well is, I think a large majority of what Path of Fire was focused around was the mounts and the mount system, and it's really well done. But they're only usable in open world, and so if all you do is world versus world or PvP, it doesn't matter at all to you except to AFK on. Um, and so like the majority of like the content that we've gotten since POF has been mounts, but that doesn't really it doesn't really give you anything. It just means you can run around a map faster. Uh, and it just, I mean, that's it. Mm, so it, yeah. it, what, what I was originally saying was just, I think we got more with Heart of Thorns. Uh, there were more people playing. And also, I mean, you know, I think, I mean, when Wing 5 was released, it definitely, I mean, people still cleared it in like a day or whatever, right? But it was like, it was a lot harder. And it was, there was, there were, it was a lot less accessible to a lot of people, mm. which I think was this, similar to when raids were originally released. It's just, yes. you know, they're new. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... No, hey, we're, I think we're all sort the, of green, people but... killed Veil Guardian in the demo weekend, like right. when it was out for like a few hours. Yeah, of course. I'm not saying they didn't. Yeah, it was I'm out just out saying. I think I was there. just saying overall, no, it was, it like was, the raiding it was community wasn't bugged that whole time, and you couldn't get into the instance, and people still killed it. Right. Well, so it, no, but, but, no, like we we let's let's call, we just we're sidetracking so much here. So I'm really yeah. look, look. What we're, what Roy was saying here, okay, I'll try and be as concise as possible, and we just don't sidetrack away from this. Is the fact that when raids came out, it seemed like there was more content because you had to figure out the game, and then you had to beat the game, right? Like now we already have the game pretty figured out. And the point I was saying about Veil Guardian is that if the reason Veil Guardian was so hard is because we didn't really know about boons, so therefore we didn't know about damage, and we didn't really know about tanking or healing, right? So like, people had no idea that, that you could do like this really abusive stuff with it, heal Ellie, right? Or or heal yeah, Druid, or right? Or Mesmer. Like no one really knew yeah, what the hell was strong. going on. But no, it no, it's not wrong. It is. It's completely correct. It's completely there correct. Never, no, there was never no, anywhere else right. you would tank. So no, 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 no. The first, the first meta in Guild Wars Two. The very first meta in Guild Wars 2 was an Anchor Guardian with Hammer for protection and altruistic healing and shouts, a Mesmer for quickness, and it did okay damage, and three Warriors because they buffed themselves and they were easy to play into damage. People have figured out, like, the Guild Wars 2 Trinity since the beginning of time. Like, this isn't, like... But that wasn't people, really people, tanking. People... people like no, it was, because bosses aggro off of toughness and proximity. So you have the Anchor Guardian, and, like, that's specific to some mobs, and, like, people would do that with Moss Man, too. Like, you would go in with a Guardian with Knight's Armor, and Moss Man would aggro onto them, until something started doing damage to the point where it outweighed the toughness and the, the aggro to the toughness, or they got too close and consistently did damage to it. There have right. always been aggro mechanics in the game, and people, like, figure this out, like instantly like none none of this is new it's just that there's an escalation because they've added more things maybe maybe it's just because i didn't participate in like the more organized communities and stuff of pv back then but like i think that 
I, what I, again, it just wasn't as it wasn't as organized and it wasn't as established as it was when Heart of Thorns came out and like or it, when as it became when Heart of Thorns came out. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't like a hardcore dungeon runner or something, you know, pre Heart of Thorns. So I could be wrong. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think I think we we might have to agree, agree to disagree here. I yeah, suppose to no, a no, 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 no. It's not an agree to disagree. It's an agree for one person to be right and one person to be wrong. Because I'm actually correct. Oh. Like I don't I don't know what the argument is. Uh, the, the 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 argument is is that I think that if Veil Guardian was released today, no one would think it was hard, and it would die incredibly quickly, probably in within three or four tries. No, that's wrong. Because people wouldn't have had a reason to figure out things. No, yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Because, like, I think if the mechanics had been introduced in some other fashion, maybe. But I don't think that people would just immediately get the, it. The, the, problem, the problem is that there's there are so few updates to these things that people get this. So Nike made this point really well. Back when Wooden Potatoes was talking about how dungeons got easier. And it's not that dungeons got easier, it's that people did them for so long that they just figured out how to completely perfect everything. And that's what's happened. Yeah. Because people well, figured out, oh, creep. I can... No, they're the, the only power creep has been break bars. Break bars are the only power creep that has ever happened to Go Wars 2 in PvE. And oh, healers. Okay. Well, and healers too. But like people, like, oh my gosh, like even on old fractals, like... OG fractal like level 80 like you still had like heal like hammer support guardian and you had a thief that would put down poison fields and you would blast it for weakness like you were doing all of the like it's it's all of this stuff has always been around in some capacity or the other like it, it's just you don't people, think that there's more damage in the game now than no, there was before nowhere close it's 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 always been relatively the same compared to what's been uh, what's been accessible honestly what's back been. back in the old proper tempest days like yeah te well back in back in the old on hot release there was probably more damage then than there was now i would say hey because there mm. was there was 66 percent alacrity uh like ellie was fully unnerfed ice bow was unnerfed um I, everything was busted as fuck back yeah, then. yeah but like rev old, was unnerfed as well like rev was unnerfed old quickness Oh, like Ellie was still a thing, like with Ice Bow and Lion Casting. Oh, Lion okay. Casting, remember stuff? <laughs> and, and FGS Rush and Bear Form Rush. Like, it's, it's always, <laughs> there's always been stuff that's just been broken miles. So, for people, for the uninitiated, Fiery Greatsword 4, I think, the uh, oh, Rush. Yeah, the rush. So, used to. People figured out that the the way that that skill used to work is that it put down multiple little little fire lines. It was just a trail of like little ticking damages. And Arena Net never thought that people would figure out how to put bosses into a corner and use the rush into a corner on top of the boss's hitbox and stack up all of the fire lines on top of each other and one shot the boss. People didn't think, like, who would have figured that out? It's because we had a lot of time to do the content. And also, when Defiant stacks were a thing, when you the boss would have five stacks of Defiant, a CC would take the Defiant off. Guess what? FGS rush in bear form. Put the boss in a corner, bear form rush did the same thing with the ticks, and you would just permanently take off the Defiance and just stack up shit tons of damage. And, and then people figured out that you could, like, you could cast Fiery Greatsword Rush and then blink at the same time, and it would just stick you in the place where the blink landed. So you didn't even have to put things in the walls anymore. Like, all of it, like, line casting Ice Bow, you start casting Ice Bow in an area, and then you burning retreat backwards or dodge roll backwards, and the AoE has this, the, this, the circle is the area in which the AoE has to occur and it's relative to your player position. So you move the player position backwards, and you still have the limitation of the circle, but it puts all the AoEs, like the damages, on top of each other. So people would do that backwards on top of the ASP, AC Spider Queen and solo it in, like, 13 seconds, the whole boss, by themselves. Like, you, like the, the, the gap between, like, what people, like, just regular Joe Guild Wars 2... And, like, old quickness used to be, like, 66% too. But people didn't know about Elementalist and Lightning Hammer. And, like, constantly, like, Blast Finishers and all the stuff. 
it was just that people thought Warrior was the best, but then people started to figure shit out. So it's always been the same. It's always been there's a gap, but like it, stuff is just broken and stays broken, and people figure stuff out, and then Arena Net nerfs it. Like it's going to continue to happen. It's always been that way. Mm. Uh, okay, let, let me try and uh, let me see if I can agree with you uh, a little, a little bit. Uh, so, well, I I already do. Like we just we just seem to be looking at this slightly differently. But okay, so. What I what I what I'm trying to get at, and what Roy was trying to get at, is that because the content is new and the type of mechanics, the same reason why Doom was very hard to beat for the first time. Like uh, it took it took a lot harder to beat Doom. It took a lot longer, sorry, to, to beat uh, Doom than any other boss. Really, the reason was is because the mechanics were very different. Right, no one had any experience in dealing with mechanics like Doom mechanics. And what I'm saying is, that if they release a boss like Veil vale Guardian, or the reason why Wing Four was so easy is because the mechanics were essentially rehashed. Right, the bosses also had very low HP, but that's another thing. Right, um, the the mechanics were basically nothing new. Right, and because they were nothing new, um, we just it just got cheesed very very quickly. Right, uh, and on on top of that, um, the kind of composition was a lot more thought out as well. Um, because, like, well, the, one of the reasons why, uh, th this is, this, I don't know, this, this is just, like, true. Like, the, one of the reasons um, Veil vale Guardian was so hard, like, or doing Wing 1 was so hard for the first time, was because um, the knowledge the player base had with regards to doing damage in a 10-man situation and in conjunction with mechanics was very limited. Do you think that's fair? No. No, no. But okay, right. I'm 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 looking at QT's first Veil vale Guardian kill here, and it they <laughs> they have one minute and forty seven seconds left on the Enrage timer, or oh, forty three I mean... seconds. Okay, are you telling me they know they know lots about doing damage in a ten man environment here? Yes, because it's a progression, and they figure things out when they do the combat. They were using like blast they're... finishes to heal, dude, on on the greens. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's still correct. Like. Blast finishers healing was never invalidated. Like that's still a thing. Oh no, I I, I agree, but I, there's just more efficient ways of doing it. Sure, but like, geez, there there's still dungeon bosses with probably actually better mechanics than raid, and and definitely more flavor than like raid bosses. Like for sure, like bandit what trio. Anything? It's just there's content that's difficult. That people don't know about or don't play or don't think about or whatever the case is. Like there are really good encounters in dungeons. Problem is, it's the problem with dungeons. I agree, but what does that have to do anything? Because bosses have no health, and so people got to the point where they use berserker's armor in a corner and never saw mechanics. And so Veil vale Guardian comes out, and suddenly there's something to think about. And then people think about it, and then they figure it out, and it's on farm after a week. Hey, uh, Mela, could you just breathe into your mic if you're still here? Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought. I thought. Oh my god. Okay. Well, okay. You know what? That was. That, I tell you what. That was a pretty interesting discussion. Uh, it's one it, good to have. I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I think Deathly in this kill is actually playing like dueling illusions as well, which is a pretty interesting yeah. choice. Uh, <laughs> or something like. Yeah, he is. He's playing dueling illusions. So like, there's there's some interesting choices there. I don't know. I feel like if if you took these same ten players in QT and then you gave them Veil vale Guardian and they'd never seen it before, I actually think they'd flatten it really quickly because they just like it would get a his HP would get annihilated and you know what they'd probably just heal through everything anyway I so, a, gr so a great example of this is Ken right I think Ken is fairly analogous to Veil vale Guardian right would you agree almost no, no why not wrong he doesn't move. He does Ken is easier, definitely easier than Veil vale Guardian right well, he is he is a lot easier but like QT killed him second try like mostly yeah. because of how much damage they did right right like, so but, the, the reason no it's because that they've had time... Okay, so FGS blinking onto a raid boss would be... Like, that That wouldn't matter because the raid bosses have so much more health and they're around and there are phases and whatever. But, like, if QT had spent all of this time learning how to do damage with 10 people and buffs and optimize things, then, yes, they would... If, if for some reason, they had been doing things like that and then Veil vale Guardian was released tomorrow, they would go in and flatten it. They would probably take three pulls to figure out what green circles are. They would probably already figure out that you could distort it or whatever the case. And then, like, it, it, it's like Chronomancer. I remember the first time we were doing Gorsival when I was still in EG before Fion decided that he wanted to tell me he hated women, was like, 
Mm. So card card playing Chronomancer, we had one Chronomancer tanking, and like I remember looking at my bar having like a minute and a half of quickness and alacrity. Because like Chronomancer was super broken, people figured it out, and Arena Net had no idea because the people that were testing it had no idea how to play it or just how to play the game in general. They were running double chrono and like comps internally, apparently, keeping up less boons on 10 people than like card could do alone. And like people figured this shit out really fast. And so, like, if Q, my point is, if QT had for some reason been practicing doing damage with 10 people and optimizing buffs, and there was never any content at all in Guild Wars 2, and then Veil vale Guardian came out, yes, they would run over it. We get that, yeah, but that's, that's what I mean, though. That, no, no, yeah. oh, my goodness, no, I, we've had this, like, a horrific communication error. I'm saying that, suppose all the other Raid Wings had already been released, and now they dropped Wing 1, okay? It would be way easier than if it was released, when it was released, when there'd been no previous raids. Of course. Okay. That's what that's what Roy Anyways, was that's uh, what Hey yeah. Noah, what are you doing yeah, about? Oh my god. That's what Roy was getting at. That was Roy, that was Roy, what, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> the point no the point that was things are more broken now than they ever have. No, been. no, that wasn't no, no. gap no. between skilled players now. No, and that, no, that, no, that was I mean that, that they, was the whole point. No, that, that was the a point. point. That was no, that, no, that no, was no. a different no, point. The point, <laughs> the point was tea. that Things are more broken now in Guild Wars 2 than they ever have been, oh and the gap God. between skilled players and non-skilled players is bigger than it ever has been. And both of those are patently no, untrue. Those are two points. I think I think both of the points are valid, though. I mean, yeah, like there, I think there is um there is a more like, the the good people have got really, really, really fucking good, and there's still uh, people coming in. I mean, the thing is, like everyone enters at the same skill level vaguely, but the thing is, like, I think people have got really no, good at Guild no, Wars 2. It's right? not true. People do not enter at the same well, level. Vaguely. You know, look, okay, we don't have to be too pedantic. Vaguely, right? Everyone comes in vaguely, not knowing what they're doing. Right? Some people are naturally better at video games. Other people are naturally worse. Right? Like that's how it is. Right? Um, but yeah, def I mean, is the is there power creep? I mean, you, yeah, yeah, there definitely is some power creep, but not a crazy amount. And they've kind of tried to tone it down as well, right? Like it's taken a little while, but they've got there in the end. Um, but uh, oh, I don't know. Like th this, is, this is a complete fucking clown fiesta, dude. This is a, an absolute clown fiesta. I th th no, like, we, we weren't even talking about the same thing. Like what? No, no, no. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, anyways, how about that balance patch we had last week? It was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was a balance patch. Yeah. It was exciting. Okay. All right. Okay. That that that's enough. Of, that's enough for tea time, guys. That's it's time to. <laughs> I need to go eat dinner. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's time to bring this one to an end. What a way to end the tea time, guys. A heated debate. Okay, let's just call up fucking Delta and we can get the start between Brazil and him then. Let's fucking go, dude. Uh, okay. Uh, it's time to shill. It's time to shill, guys. Tea time is over. All right. So, you know what? Mela goes first. He is here. Our special uh, guest. Hey, Mela. Okay. What do you do these days? Who are you, Mella? Explain to the stream. Explain yourself. I you play Guild Wars, Guild Wars too. Oh. Yeah, I stream Guild Wars um, mm -hmm. three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. I mostly do PvE content, as you could have understood by me not joining any World v. World of PvP conversations during this day time. Okay. And... Well, Mella, I valued all of your input. And I Thank think you. this tea time... Would have been significantly worse without you. Did you like me breathing in a microphone? Oh, that was the best. That was the highlight oh, yeah. of, of my week. Oh yeah. Wow. But yeah, um, I have a YouTube channel where I post some raiding stuff. I post a lot of memes lately. Memes. And... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, what did you say? You have a YouTube channel where you post what? Memes. Oh, memes. Oh, I thought you said bathing stuff. Wait. What? what? I got excited. <laughs> Okay. I wish I did, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, there we go. So be sure to check out Mella for those that PvE action, guys. That meteor sprinkle gameplay. Oh yeah. Alright. And just across on the other side of the screen, okay? The world versus what the tower of world versus world himself, okay? Holding the community together with his like very strong pillars. It is Roy! Yeah. Alright, hi. 
I don't I don't really do anything. Why was I here? Why am I still playing? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, uh, oh, actually, no, I do have an announcement. Um, uh, well, first of all, fuck France. Uh, and second of all, um, it, you can uh, buy Amazon Prime, link your Twitch account, you get a free sub, uh, go to this page, uh, twitch.tv slash mighty teapot, one weeks. word, and uh, sub for free. Yeah. Okay, that, that's good advice. I Yeah, but also you can go and uh, follow Roy on Twitch as well. And on Twitter. There's no point. I haven't streamed, and I, I'm pretty sure I'll get kicked out of the program soon. Uh, I don't... All you gotta do is make a video about legendary armor. And that should be <laughs> yeah. well, I, I, I don't even have the motivation to do that. I don't no. know, dude. Okay. <laughs> All right. PV, come, come. I can't. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I just, Play PVE uh, with honestly, me. Honestly, I'll, I'll teach just, you. Just I'll sub the teep. Anyone who's still sub to me, cancel your subscription. Sub the teapot, uh, and I would un. I would unfollow my Twitch. To be honest, Wait, like I just no, just no. Roy, come on! You need to in a it. year when alliances come out, I'll oh stream. yeah, I'll be back. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then finally, okay, the debate master, the hat master, okay, the ghost, the tyrant, okay, it is Brazil, Brazil DNT, aka Ghostly Infusion. What are you up to these days? Where are those streams, Brazil? What's going on there? Okay, where are the streams? Yeah. So that's funny. There's there's been a lot of stuff that's happened. But I mean, without getting into personal life and why I had to, well, why? I guess technically I could have kept streaming. It, anyways, there were things that came up and prevented that. But I don't know. I should post. I've been doing that for a long time. I stopped for a while, and now I'm doing it again. Okay. So, nice I, hat. Yeah, uh, thanks. You want to tell us a bit about your hat or maybe your inspiration for that hat? Yeah, I found it on the ground in Seattle, I think. Okay. I wonder. I wonder why. I wonder why you found it there. Uh, why are you in Seattle? <laughs> He's making a meme. Anyways, He's making a funny. Uh, <laughs> I. Oh really? He's oh making, really? He's doing a big meme. I oh, should. I didn't I, catch I on. Should, yeah. I should do a. I should do a video on the history of the Guild Wars Two meta. That would be really good. That would be a good video, yeah. actually. But didn't uh, uh, didn't Nike do that? It was not going to be as good as mine if he did. Okay. Yeah, I got him. All right. I, I was around since since a long time ago. I, I think I was in it doing stuff. I don't know. Anyways, Nike's video is probably good. <laughs> but I think I could do a better job. Hey, Brazil, you want to come over for dinner? Huh. All right. Well, there you go. It's yeah. time for the final person. It's me. Okay. If you like the tea time. Follow the tea time, okay? Follow the stream. Tea times every week, mostly, okay? Mostly all the time. We have the the freshest content, the greatest, most powerful intellect in all of Guild Wars 2 here on a weekly basis. You know, it's all good stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Follow, buy the Ajax mug. Follow all the delusional elitists. Best streamers, guys. Best streamers ever, okay? Follow, subscribe, uh, yeah. Come back and watch every single day. Follow me on Twitter as well. My Teapot, you can find that easily. Just do it. Give me those followers. Subscribe on YouTube. There's also fresh video content many times, sometimes anyway. And there you go. You can subscribe there as well. But basically, that's it. Yeah. Follow, subscribe, Twitch Prime. Do it. Okay. Best host in all of Guild Wars 2. You're right. Yep. Okay. Buy an Ajax mug. All these things can be yours. And then buy Guild Wars 2 using our referral links as well. Nice. Okay. Just do it. It's good. Everyone's got one, except Brazil. Feels bad, man. But, you know, that... <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Mello ain't a partner? Nope. Okay, fuck. Do you, wait, do you have a... Do you have a... Wait. I don't know. Oh, I don't even know, dude. It's whatever. Right. Just keep positive referral. <laughs> Fine, just use my referral link. Subscribe to the stream. Come back and watch every single day. Just leave the tab open at this point, to be honest. Thank you guys for watching. And we will see you all... Well, In very this. soon. We'll see you all very soon because honestly, we're not going anywhere. Even if, the, well, yeah, until the game is fully dead. And okay, that won't happen because we will support it with our corpses if necessary. So yeah, thanks for watching, yeah! guys. Yeah, woo! woo, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll 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 see you around. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>